Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting on November 4th, 2020. I think there's somebody that's not muted. If they don't mind muting their phone, thank you. Okay. Um, here in the town hall at 6 p.m. in the main meeting room at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and were required public participation provided in accordance with Governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL chapter 30A, section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. The remote connection below noted is 312, the dial-in number, 312-626-6799 or 929-205-6099. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The passcode is 570012. Meeting attendees should mute their phones, star six for landlines, unless asking questions or commenting. Um, and again, if you need the toll free number, it's 1-833-548-0276. So we're calling the meeting to order. And the first scheduled hearing is the 350th steering committee, meet, um, steering committee. And um, Jennifer Renillard and Holly Lankowski are both here tonight to help um, give a little information out. Go ahead, ladies. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Um, my name is Jennifer Renillard. I am one of the steering committee members, and Holly and I will uh, be going over um, the information for volunteers. I'm going to share my screen. Give me one second. Let me know if you can see it. Yep. Okay. Hey, thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, hi, I'm Holly Lankowski. I'm also on the steering committee. Um, I also wanted to let you know other members of the steering committee. Um, we have Peter Thomas, who is um, a great historian, um, and he's uh, doing a lot of work on the history of our town. We have Jay Stryker, who also is interested in the history of our town and the industrial background of the town as well. Um, Jennifer, who just introduced herself. Uh, Carolyn Ness is our select board rep and, of course, um, a member of our community. So um, another great resource for our committee and myself. Um, the steering committee is looking for additional members to complement our group. And um, as Jennifer said, we are looking for volunteers as we move forward toward our celebration, which will be in 2023, our 350th. Um, as you can see on the slide in front of you, some of the subcommittees um, we're looking to form and have leadership for uh, would be the 5K uh, Family Fun Run, um, Agriculture um, and representing the farms in our community, arts and theater. Um, there will be a multitude of events under arts and theater, as well as the agriculture. Um, so we definitely can utilize quite a few people there. Other subcommittees include events. Um, we have Jay Stryker, who is um, a member of the Industrial Museum up in Greenfield, and he would like to, um, you know, have events where people can do things hands-on, you know, with, with our children in the area so they can see how industrial um, events have increased um, within our community. Historic activities, uh, there will be lecture series throughout the entire year of 2023 to talk about various events that have occurred within Deerfield. Old Home Day, 
where we welcome community members who no longer live within Deerfield back to the community so they can participate within our events um, and catch up uh, with our 350th celebration. Our parade, which will um, be in June of 2023, will be an amazing event with community members participating by sponsor, you know, on floats and other um, means. We definitely need a lot of volunteers to make sure that these events are enjoyed by all and we will be able to have them um, throughout the year. So if you're not available for one, maybe you're available for another or you prefer one event over another, your lap, you can sign up for that. And other subcommittees, we have the Polka Festival. Uh, there's marketing to be done in order to advertise this event to, throughout the community, local and throughout the United States. Not everyone who is from here still lives here and other events and activities that are coming up. Help us make these memories last forever. We have so many people within the community who were here for the 300th, you know, as, as young um, young people, and they have been able to share with us a lot of the information, um, so that way we're aware of different events that were making a lasting impression then. If you'd like to get involved, if you're curious to know more, or if you have any questions, you can send us an email to deerfield 350th at gmail.com. That's D E E R F I E L D 350 TH at gmail.com. We also have a Facebook page where we post information at different times. Um, and we hope that you will follow that page. Thank you. Thank you for allowing the opportunity to come in to give this presentation. As many um, community members know, you can't have a wonderful celebration without the participation, um, you know, from our community members. And you will also influence the, the year by letting us know what you would like to see within the community. It's not our event, it's our community event. I love that. Thank you. Ollie? Uh, I'm wondering if anyone from the board or any of our community members who have settled in have any questions for us? I don't, um, this is Trevor speaking, I, I don't have a question. I'm really thankful and grateful that you're um, starting to get this going and, um, and volunteering your time. It's such an important event and um, I, I'm excited seeing little links and stuff on Facebook about older pictures or things that have happened in the past, and um, I'm so excited for the community to come together. We need this more than anything to reconnect as a community and to celebrate our history and all the good things that have happened here in Deerfield in our future. So I really appreciate you having enthusiasm and getting people involved, and I love that you're reaching out and getting ideas from people. So I hope people will get involved. I will try to promote as much as I can. Uh, for people to participate and share their ideas, and um, I'm really so excited to uh, to do something fun for our community. So thank you for volunteering the time. Yeah, that, you're welcome. Yeah, I just. Any other questions? I think no questions. It's just you know, just building on Trevor. The uh, you know, so thankful that we have the group of people in town that we have, um, and you know, make this celebration is great if not greater than the uh, 300 that we had so. um, there are other, uh, other, uh, other I just want to say there are other committees that are willing to work with us on the 350th um, like the historic commission is working on a walking tour of South Deerfield um, of historic buildings and homes down here and so that's you know that's a, like a really fun thing too so I mean there's a lot of activities that are starting to form up and um, if there's anything that anybody would like to participate in or um, thinks is a great idea, step forward and we'll make it, you know, have, help us make it happen. Yeah. Great. 
challenging bidding conditions for mechanical work related to water, wastewater treatment, pump stations, etc. cetera. Um, in a nutshell, I guess I'd attribute it to two or three things. One, it's a, it's a very small pool of qualified and interested contractors. Um, they're all generally very busy right now, which is a perfect storm for those of you that may have done things in your homes yep. uh, over the past year. Um, and there's also a lot of things going on in the market that we can't control uh, relative to factories running at reduced uh, output due to COVID provisions and thus the reduced output has led to changes in pricing. Uh, there's a lot of volatility right now uh, with piping prices in the market from a number of things including the tariffs, um, again the COVID issues and even things down to manufacturers haven't been able to ship things across the country because there's been a shortage on lumber. I don't know if that's related to wildfires or just market instability but I, you know, I had a project in my house and we couldn't get pressure treated lumber. You know, we had to wait six weeks to get it. So uh, it was weight and it was a heck of a lot more expensive than it should have been. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of things going on that keep me up at night right now. We just opened bids on a project in Orange. Uh, prices were higher than we expected. Um, we're making some adjustments so that the project can, can, can continue. And in light of those lessons learned, the benefit for Deerfield is we can anticipate those in this project. Um, we'll incorporate the use of alternates in the bid yeah. uh, to provide us some flexibility when we open bids uh, to keep things moving. But I just, I want to cautiously prepare yeah. you know, you that, that that may be something that we have to cross. And who knows, maybe four months from now, volatility has subsided. I certainly hope right. so. Um, but we can't control it, so we'll just continue to work through it as best we can. And I think our, our site, you know, from what I understand, is, is a little, it's, it's fairly easy to work at. You know, the projects are spread out a little bit, so that might give us some favorability in bidding. Um, yeah, there's they can do them concurrently. And you know, one of the, I guess one of the benefits only having the one clarifier in this field <laughs> is that there's an open space to build the second offline. Yeah. Uh, there's three big elements of construction in phase one. The new yeah. secondary clarifier, which is clean, as you mentioned, Trevor. For, yes. for, it's not like a, we're going to gut, gut our house and rebuild everything from the ground up while we're living yep. in it. It's kind of like an addition that you can construct offline while you're living in the house. Yep. There's the clarifier, as I mentioned. There's the new headworks building, which is also pretty clean from a construction standpoint. And then there's the new... I guess what we would call aeration slash electrical slash sludge pumping building. Right. That one's probably of the three because it's directly adjacent to the aeration tank. That's the um, that's the one element that is um, has some construction staging. But the contractor, in your case, should be able to do a lot more things concurrently, which significantly helps with economies of scale with balancing the trades. Etc. But it's right. just you know, I know. It's something to it's put on the radar. Now we'll have to deal with it. Everything's but, um, gotten. Much but everything's on track. Yep. So That's so good. many of these plants are the same age because they were installed under the clean air, the original clean air bill. Yeah. Uh, I mean clean water bill. Um, or is that what's happening? Because people have put off stuff. Yeah, I think there's just there's a lot going on in the market. Oh, there's there's a, there's a lot of projects that are bid. You're right. I mean most of the plants were constructed between you know, 73 and 82. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Hatfields was like the most recent that we saw at 82. That was one of the last ones, but you do the math and yeah. 30 years down the road and you know, uh, okay. we're, we're pretty much all in the same boat. It's also driven, Carolyn, by the permit cycles um, in Western Mass. DEP and EPA had kind of been in a holding pattern on the permits and they've really caught up in the Berkshires, which is great, but they're all stacked. You know, so now we're, you know, instead of having like one or two permits a year, we kind of had that ripple wave effect where six to 10 of them have popped in a two year period and that just cycles through. But, you know, these contractors serve a, a 60 to 90 mile radius. So it's not just Western Mass, it's right. Southern Hampshire, Eastern Mass. It's just, Southern there's Hampshire. a lot of work for them right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is. So, um, I mean, we want that. I mean, we want the economy to be strong and for people to have jobs and everything. But when, as the owner, yeah. You like people to be a little bit hungrier at times, so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll work through it. Yeah. Um, if, do we have, um, once we get the plans on phase one done, would this can be considered then shovel ready? Oh, you're, if, if we're, you're ready to go. I mean, okay. it's, it's, it'd be pretty seamless, uh, aside from incorporating input from 
the select board, from the town administrator's office, from Kevin and Keith, you know, DPW and the, and the South Deerfield plant respectively. Um, we'll be ready to rock and roll, and then USDA will, you know, provide a review of the draft bidding documents, and they'll, they'll say go. Now, one of the things that we've been working on with the town over the last week and a half is making sure all of the non-technical bullets are addressed in the checklist for USDA, so that when we're ready, you know, the town's ready and USDA doesn't have to wait on anything. Right, so. and I think there's been a changeover in, in um, personnel at USDA, and so I think Barb and Brenda had sent a bunch of stuff and it never kind of went through to the new person, so we really need to, and after, we had a meeting last week and we all kind of got together and said, okay, after the election, let's sit down go through the bulleted list, I know Casey's got this on a radar too, and just get out of the way all the little minute stuff, I mean it's not the minute, but all the paperwork stuff, so no, they're, they're not waiting on us for anything. We give them everything they need. I know it's duplicate work now because it, it is what it is with a changeover, but make sure we give them everything they have and that way when they're ready to go, we're ready to go. You're still in great standing. You're, yeah. you're ahead of the technical team, as is generally the case. You have really good staff, mm -hmm. you know, finance, everything that just, has everything done and makes our life, his life easier when we're trying to get these projects moving. So yep. um, we'll work on it with the town now yeah. that the chaos is behind us in the last couple of weeks. So. Oh. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So that's phase one. And then uh, in anticipation of uh, phase two, we talked about, I believe, back in the first quarter when we last met and chatted that we would uh, discuss the timing of a second application to USDA yep. for the phase two project. Um, and I would think that somewhere in the first quarter, we would want to make that decision collectively as to kind of how things line up. Yeah. And that'll, that'll kind of weave into James's presentation on the rates. Right. Um, we During that meeting, it sounded like USDA, USDA would kind of want that application sooner than what we were thinking. We were thinking maybe July or something. Like summer, we would do it. but. It sounds like yeah, the, for the Nash for the regular pool, I think on this project they we wanted it in by they the wanted end. it in by March if we were to go. So right. the give and take is we wanna we wanna be kind of in like know what our bid's good and be going into construction and then kind of ramp up phase two so that the design of phase two is going concurrently with the phase one construction. Right. And then hopefully um, at least have one contractor that's in our backyard. Oh, by the way, we'd like to do a second edition at the house. And, yep. You know, hopefully you've got one captive contractor there that's already mobilized. Yep. Um, the balance becomes USDA used to provide us five years to construct the project from the time they give us our letter of commitment or LLC. Um, they've tightened that up to three, and I think for good reason. They're trying to make sure that there aren't cost overruns and. You know, yep. that towns have some skin in the game relative to, to moving things along. But what it requires us to do is make that investment in the design phase so that by the time you get the LOC, you're ready to go. Because there's always other delays with construction, whether it be bidding and, yep. and it takes us almost, you know, three to four months to get through pre-qual, sub-bids, general bids. I mean, it's, you know, it you've done this with schools and yep. everything else. It's a, it's a significant time commitment for, right. for the town. but. You know, right now our focus is is just cranking out phase one and working with the town to incorporate review comments, yep. positioning you for flexibility that if we do open bids and they're high, we can peel off little pieces that could be moved. They're not they're shovel ready to Carolyn's point. They right. could be deferred to phase two if we have to. Right. So. Well, I was just I, I wanted to make sure we were, if if a infrastructure you know bill co goes through Congress, we want. Right. I mean, we, that's what happened in 2008. Yeah. You are not able to take advantage of any shovel-ready projects. You've done a great job with MVP, and you know now you're primed with USDA, and you're always a good candidate for state funding. So I think the town continues to be well positioned for opportunities yeah. because of your proactive investment in planning, and in some cases, designed to be shovel-ready. So um, yeah. you know, let's let's get through the holidays. Yes. Yeah. Let's get sure. this thing ready to go to bid, and then let's have another conversation. Um, about how we want to handle phase two and the timing of the next application. Okay. Yep, yep. Okay. No, that makes sense. Okay. Dave, did you have any questions? No, not yet. Okay. So, um, the collection system, 
Um, yeah, just a couple of quick little updates there. Obviously, I'm sure many residents have seen the, the team out there in the town. Yeah. Um, we want to provide a special thanks to Kevin and his staff. They've been tremendous with not only helping when you know we've each had trouble, um, yeah. but, but they've been great about cleaning the pipes in advance and, uh, and really allocating the resources. So your DPW has done a phenomenal job That's great uh, to hear. facilitating the project. A good team. Um, but that should be wrapped. We had hoped to wrap that up this fall. Um, based on a lot of the pipes being in rough shape both physically and with debris we've spent you've invested a lot more time cleaning mm -hmm. ahead of the cctv to facilitate it you know it's um it's an internal inspection and you can imagine trying to, to wheel a robot through there uh, yeah. sometimes it, it's just so it's iterative and we'll wrap that up in the spring it has no impacts on budgeting right if anything it's allowed us to stretch that budget over multiple fiscal years which yes. have provided you know uh, the team collectively some flexibility in, in yep. budgeting, so. and um one other just quick anecdotal item uh, mm -hmm. is we're gearing up it's kind of as soon as we can turn the corner with the design of phase one to taking a look at the evaluation of the pipeline from old airfield to south airfield right and if you recall during the four phase recommendation that was some semblance of what would be phases three and four so Right. You know, you continue to execute, you know, almost spot on with where you projected things three and a half years ago, both in terms of the rates, the planning, the implementation of projects, and the clarifying project was just completed. It, it was wonderful. It went great. I mean, it, as we talked about, it was more expensive than we thought. It was yes. within the budget we appropriated. Right. Uh, but we did get a glimpse into some of those cost scales uh, yes. for small projects. So. Yeah. Um, I'm rambling on here. And no, no, no. Post cap good info. Have you investigated at all going from South Deerfield to Old Deerfield? Um, Instead of Old Deerfield to South Deerfield? We have not. Um, based on the investment that you've made in phase one, the South Deerfield plant is set up to have the capacity to serve the entire town. From an infrastructure standpoint, you got a fair amount of pipes in your system that were big enough to handle old Deerfield, but the opposite wouldn't be true. Um, you'd have to reconstruct in entirety a full-blown treatment plan. I mean, the old Deerfield treatment plan is, um, I want to say, about somewhere between an, an eighth and a sixth of the size of the South Deerfield plant. Um, it's a great question, I mean, because the pipe will be utilized for, what, maybe 25%? The South Deerfield plant? The old Deerfield plant. Um, well, when it when it's not raining, yeah, that's a good estimation. But there's there's definitely there's some there's some major structural issues in addition to old equipment at that plant with the concrete. I think you know Keith is great at circulating a little video clip. You know, once or twice a month, they really shed some light on it. Um, that that treatment plant up in Old Deerfield is pretty long in the tooth, and um, it, it's it's a shoebox as compared to the. South Deerfield. Everything's relative in life, right? I mean, right. the South Deerfield plant's small compared to Northampton, but I mean, relatively speaking, between the two, South Deerfield is your workhorse, and the pipe infrastructure leading up to it is much more conducive to bringing things from north to south. Maybe I missed, but does that sort of get it? Well, it does. Um, you know, I'm looking at incorporating more of the town yep. into the sewer system, and if we went looking at Mill Village, that side of uh, route 5 and 10. Yep. Um, 5 and 10 up to uh, Long Hill. Uh, it's actually a fairly easy pipeline with no pump station to get to the old acre plant. Because all you have to do is put down the new power system. You have, yeah, an, elevation, you have an elevation of less than 100, 100 feet from the high point in South Deerfield to the to the sewer treatment plant. I think it's an alternative that we certainly can can because, investigate yeah. in the in the evaluation and just uh, because you know if you look at it, the trolley tracks that were built in this town yep. over the years, you know those were built because you had to be relatively flat. Right. So if you look at the history of where those are, you know one I don't want a pump station on top of Long Hill. Yeah. No, I don't either. And if you came up the trolley tracks. Either way, you know, um, that was, you know, uh, and fortunately most of it is owned by, well, all of it from the bottom of Long Hill all the way up to is owned by one person. Right. So it just a matter of easement on that. Yep. 
I think as we um, as we get closer, you know, we're probably about a month from really getting into the nitty gritty. Why don't we put together a couple of nice elevation profiles for mm -hmm. the for the possible routes, including the one that you've mentioned, and sit down together um, with a couple arrows going in either direction and evaluate it. I think having constructed sewers in Hatfield, obviously my sensitivity is that constructing anything deeper than 10 feet given the soil conditions in this area is really, really challenging from a dewatering standpoint. You get right to the bottom of that six foot of sand and then you get that marine clay layer. I mean, you poke a boring hole in the ground, you think you hit a water main. I mean, it's, yeah. they are very, very unique soil conditions um, in this area. And um, either one of those plans would have to incorporate, you know, provisions. But it, in many places, 20 foot is kind of the standard depth that you can excavate before you get into special conditions. Mm -hmm. I would argue in Deerfield, Hatfield area, it's probably closer to 10 to 12 feet. And in some and cases, it's even shallow. That's the reason the elevation changed over right. high school. Is because when Caliber put in the original sewer uh, system, they actually went bankrupt because of the water problems by the time they hit yeah. that yeah. area. So they made concessions, and that's why they raised up so much higher in that area. Continuing. I didn't realize that. Because the original system was designed at the depth in front of the high school to go all the way along the hill without any pump stations and actually incorporate the town. Okay. This sounds like a good infrastructure segment on your 350th anniversary. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, so, well, of course, you know, coming from a construction family. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, Kevin, did you have any comments good. that you wanted to make on this? No, nope, no, nope, we're good. Um, everything seems to be going uh, very smoothly, I think. <clears throat> you know, Mike uh, uh, from DPC, the, the camera guy, uh, great guy, um, super easy to work with. Um, I've seen him uh, do some great outreach to some of the uh, residents that come up, you know, in the beginning. Um, it, I think it's just been a good overall um, operation. You know, it's going to be nice because <clears throat> at one point somebody was making comment that over on, on Tina Drive, um, when they were installing that, the groundwater was too much, so um, this person allegedly spoke with the operator of the excavator, and they drilled holes in the pipe, and they put that, and, and that's how they kept it from floating. Um, the advantage, I actually I spoke with Mike about this the other day, and he's getting ready to go ahead and run that one, that run, and I wanted to make sure that we'd be able to show that that comment that was made is un, not true because we have a boatload of people that are that are possibly saying that, that we're, we're treating groundwater that we don't need to treat, which is true because of our I and I. Right. But that being said, that's not our. Uh, I do not seriously believe that they would have put holes in a pipe to. Keep it from floating. I mean, that's just ludicrous. For one, for two, I think our, our rates down there, as far as low, would be much more dramatic than what they are. Well, originally, when the a lot of the system was put in, Walkers, who was the plumber in the town, actually did put holes in the system to get rid of groundwater. We'll see. Because when the system went in, they actually lowered the water table in the center of town two and a half feet. Glad we got a camera. We've seen some crazy things over here, so I might yeah. have been ahead. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what you'll find. I know for some good pictures, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've seen a few. Mike sent us some, some interesting photos from Deerfield. That's oh, yeah. We, Coffee cans. We have some uh, skeletons in the closet in the, in the pipe system. I don't think it would come as a surprise to you. Know, oh, well, there's a lot. Yeah. 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 It's, sure. a, uh, it's a marathon. You know, it's, you, you sit back and you look at each individual tree in the forest. is overwhelming, but... You can pick away at them, you know, one by one over time and, and, and make a dent in things. Well, it's like the house right next door here. It's got a sub cellar to below the regular cellar for, for alcohol during prohibition. And they had to put special drains in out to the brook to make sure it stayed dry. Yeah. Interesting. To speak easy. Well, that's a whole, that's a whole other topic of full monitoring the Jason Town Hall. We'll come back to that some, some other time. Um, part of the 350th. Yeah, so segueing into the uh, sewer rates, obviously, you know, we uh, we had discussed it. Um, oh, 
Is there a question? Trevor? Yes. Yeah, Trevor, this is Chris Harris. Hey, Chris, how are you? Um, good, doing very well, thanks. So very quickly, though, because there was talk about the old Deerfield wastewater treatment plant situation, integrating it potentially, integrating it with South Deerfield, et cetera. But, but I don't understand what, is there an actual plan in place for assessing that plant and all the options and what's the timeline for that evaluation or maybe it's yes. already been done starting. or yes. what so, have you. It's, 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 like, it's like the elephant in the room. Well, it's another $15 million project probably yes. and it's not clear to us what's going on. Yeah, so it's not completely clear to all of us yet. So what we did was we did an asset management plan. So we have assessed the buildings, at, you know, the, the infrastructure there. Um, and, and you're right, we do have a, a, I think a 50, roughly $50 million or something, you know, maybe even, you know, bigger than that, depends on how the bids come in. But yes, it's a large, another large expense to either remodel that place and, and upgrade everything or to look at maybe, um, decommissioning that plant and pumping it here so really what's going to happen shortly is that we'll uh, there's been several several um, evaluations of that plant uh, one by the town and one by others and the plan is to have a further evaluation of what would the feasibility be to decommission the plant and and pump that to to our facility down in west down in uh, south deerfield so that that study hasn't been done yet to see if it's if it's worth investing that uh, spending that money up front, but but losing that um, that expense and operations over many many years that we keep the other plant going, and then um, could we could we tie in other development if we do something like that, bring a pipe down down to South Deerfield, would we pick up other other opportunities for development? Um, so all of that still needs to be looked at. Um, so we have an initial kind of rough budget if we were gonna rebuild that plant. Um, and then the other idea is to kind of take a really hard look is do we really wanna update that plant and, or do we wanna decommission it and bring it here? Or, or another idea, so, but that, that's still yet to be worked out. So we focused, we decided originally, Chris, when we had started this whole sewer project, we were gonna do, um, phase one at South Deerfield, go up and do a phase two at Old Deerfield, come back and finish up South Deerfield, and then go back and finish up Old Deerfield. And we did a course correction a couple years ago and felt like, you know what, this is our workhorse, let's fix up South Deerfield first, so do phase one and two there. Meanwhile, study what really what we want to do at Old Deerfield. And maybe we do decide to go up and rebuild all of that, or we decide, you know what, for about the same amount of money and we could stop the bleeding, let's pump it down to this plant because this plant, after we get done with phase one and two at the South Deerfield plant, we'll be able to handle the inflow if we do that. So that's kind of the, the blueprint we're working on right now. Um, so we'll have more information there, I think there, later on. But is there, a, is there a timetable for doing that study? Yes. In, in parallel to what you're doing in South Deerfield? Yeah. That, Yes, now, that's, these things take a lot of time. That study is so, getting underway right, you know, within the next couple months. I would say our goal would be to okay. wrap that up, including public input by the end of March. Yeah, I mean, by the end of March. See what happens this winter, the mm -hmm. things we can't control. But. Right, with the weather and stuff. But yeah, yeah, well, yeah we're, we're starting on that right away. Okay, yeah. great. Sure. Because we don't need more surprises because all this stuff is time phase capital expenditure. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Big investment. Yeah. So we, what we secured was money for phase one and phase two and, um, you know, utilizing that grant and, you know, based on the bid environment right now, we're hoping that that may cover it. It may not. You know, we may find other things as we go through this engineering of phase one and two that, that we want to do more of at that plant or, you know, the bids are just higher and we have to cut back some things or all of that's going to get worked out, you know, over the next year. We also don't know what the grant opportunities are going to be going forward. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we're hoping that it'll be more productive. Yeah. I know it's been nice structure. Thank you, Chris. So, um, moving into the, the rates for, um, for the following year, you know, that we had planned last town meeting when we had, um, well, when we had passed this, this project and 
we had kind of cost it out for the residents about where we were going to be at for rate increases to pay for this project. Um, we knew that this, this coming rate, FY22, um, was going to be, you know, probably one of the largest jumps that we were going to tackle. We ramped up a little bit as we got to starting the projects and the design work, but um, I think, you know, next, based on, I guess I'll have uh, Jim, uh, James give us an update on that, but I think that's about where we'll be at. I think relative to the rate, sometimes it's best to try to take that backwards and give you a conclusion and then tell you how we got to that point, but mm -hmm. it is a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy in that you made the investment in phase one and in this collection system CMON program, so this is where the rubber meets the road, so basically the, the debt, you're starting to carry the debt service for the upgrade yep. and your proposed FY22 rate. And I'll just preface what James is going to get into in a little bit more detail by saying three years ago when you started this endeavor and you planned things out with input from all of the town staff and the, you know, the board and the, the residential parties, etc., you anticipated that you would be at a sewer rate that averaged $93 per, ho per household per month when you got to FY22. And we're projecting based on where we're at right now, you, we're, we're recommending that you set it at 94. So you're within a dollar of what you anticipated. So I mean, you, the select board and the town staff have really done a tremendous job staying on, on point relative to that plan you said, capitalizing on the grant, capitalizing on the low interest rates that you have right now. Mm -hmm. And, and moving the ball. I mean, this is the gold standard relative to the communities we work with in terms of keeping pace. So, kudos Good. to you guys. So, James will tell you how we got to that point. Okay, great. Yeah, so I'll just give a, a quick recap on the details of how we arrived at the $94 per house per month on average. Um, so, we presented a, a table and a set of figures uh, to the board um, a few days ago. So, we're going to start with table one. Um, in this table, we have a comparison of your current wastewater budget, so that's fiscal year. James, do you have do you have a, a screen share for? You know what? I might be if you bear with me, or if you keep talking, I'll see if I can okay. bring this. I can bring this up if it I. It hasn't changed since the email, Trevor. Right. Yep. I'll see if I can sign on here and mute. Yeah, I, it's just it would be. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I mean it's hard for people to follow. So while Trevor's looking at that, why don't you just explain what the current FY21 sewer rate structure is, both the fixed fee and the fixed rate? Okay, um, so the, the current rate structure, uh, as a quick recap, and we're not proposing any changes to the rate structure, we're actually only propose, proposing a change to a part of the rate. There we go, a little feedback. Um, so the, the current sewer rate structure is there's a fixed fee per billing period, so sewer users pay $100 per billing period, and on top, top of that they pay fixed rate per usage. So that's a fixed rate per thousand gallons of usage. The current sewer rate is $12.34 per thousand gallons used on top of the $100 per billing period. So in this scenario, we're only proposing a change to that fixed rate, so a change to that $12.34. We are not proposing a change to that $100 uh, fixed fee per billing period. It's always been easy. Yeah. <laughs> looks like Trevor's <laughs> text. Because I don't know if, it, you know, with multiple emails, they go to different spots. So uh, bear with me a second. Why don't you just talk about, in late terms, how you had the current FY21 budget? Yep. The projects that were committed and how that translated to the increase in FY22 for the anticipated debt service and you know kind of how that just shapes up. It's just slicing the pie after that. Yeah, so once we have the table up, uh, the group can look at it a little better. But we looked at your current sewer operating budget. So the, the current sewer operating budget for fiscal year 2021 is approximately a million dollars. It's 983000 So that's the cost to operate your plant. So that includes your staff, your chemicals, maintaining the collection system, any fees in the offices, that's all included within that number. Also in the sewer budget, the town had carried $365,000 for the debt service. Um, so this is for, in first part, the clarifier mechanism that was recently replaced. We had a debt service on that and also carrying the debt service for the phase one USDA upgrades. 
Now this was uh, a good move on the town's part um, to get that in preemptively, and we show it as a withdrawal from retained earnings from this year, but that likely will not actually hit um, because that money will start to be spent in fiscal year 2022. Um, so that's a little more cushion we're going to have in the reserve. Uh, also, in this year's budget, we have the year one CMOM program. That's as we recapped the evaluation of the collection system, the CCTV for the pipes, all the reporting and the recommendations are, that are going to come from that program. And that totaled a wastewater budget of about $1.5 million. Um, but again, that's carrying the debt service for the phase one treatment plant upgrades um, that's not likely to be reflected in this budget. Um, so we are anticipating that retained earnings will be approximately the same at the end of this year. Uh, the certified retained earning balance, um, if you move down to the line, it's got the little footnote four on it for mm -hmm. fiscal year 2020. That was about 1.325 million, and that was a slight increase from the previous year. So we've done a good job of kind of budgeting where we need to be at and almost matching with a little cushion uh, to put in that reserve. Yep. Um, so right now we've got about one year's reserve in budget, which is, is our goal to float around that number. Um, so the town's done a great job of, of hitting that target each year. If we move into the proposed fiscal year 2022 budget, you'll see that the number goes up slightly for the wastewater operation and maintenance budget. So we escalated this by 4.32%, which is standard inflation for wastewater. Right. And we wanna make sure we're keeping up with that every year, as well as any capital projects that are being undertaken by the town. We held the debt service the same because we have those numbers, those are fixed numbers um, on the clarifier mechanism and the letter of conditions from USDA. And you can see we don't have any money for CMOM this year. So we're doing the evaluation. We'll look at the results of that and prepare recommendations for future fiscal years for repairs in the collection system. One item we are looking at adding for fiscal year 2022 as Dave prefaced, is the design phase debt service. Mm -hmm. So we want to try and stay ahead of the USDA application since we have that tight time frame of three years. So if we advance the design that allows us to be shovel ready when we get the letter of conditions from USDA, knock on wood, we can put it out to bid and hopefully get some good numbers that come back. Um, this we carried as a bond on the debt service. It would likely be a ban. Mm -hmm. um, so this number is a little conservative. Um, so that would give you a little little right. padding depending on how things play out over the next year. Um, and when all is said and done, to reach that total of about 1.4 million without withdrawing from retained earnings, we're looking at a sewer rate of approximately 1638 per thousand gallons. So we're not gonna change that fixed fee per billing period, but we are gonna adjust the sewer rate and it'll be reflected on consumption rather than on the fixed fee, um, which we found to be the most fair and equitable way of distributing the rates. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, and again, for, for the residents, yes, they, you know, this is what we had talked about. It was, they should be expecting, you know, we, we've been going up a little bit preparing for this. This is a, one of the significant increases to start managing the project and getting it going. And I think, as you said, Dave, we're, we're within a dollar of what we were, Kind of targeting a while back, and right, you know, I think that there are many play out that way. Yeah, and right. Trevor, if you can scroll to the next sure. um, figure, we can look at kind of the rates. effect. Um, what, what, uh, Dave's oh, yeah. question I have on your rates. Yeah. You know, you're looking back at the projections. Did your projections take into account the 70 new connections that you have to the system? Uh, the 70 new connections that came in at from from Sugarloaf. From Sugarloaf. From Sugarloaf. So that's a ten. We have that's ten percent. Almost ten percent increase. Now. The short answer is no. No, no. We looked at it based on uh, we kept it parallel with the projections that we had. So we don't have consumption data from them yet, and it's something that we can incorporate if we get it from the town and uh, and see how that's going to play out. So right. That maybe a ten percent. Could, in a sense, actually help us maybe reduce the sewer rate just a little bit? Yeah, theoretically. I mean, I wouldn't feel comfortable saying that. No, I'm not saying it. Yeah, yeah, saying but yeah as we all take into really account, we have a usage of it and stuff. As we move along. No, so I'd be yeah. surprised yeah. that, you know, new construction is going to be, I would assume, low flow devices and such. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it helped offset this by 3 to 4%. Yeah. So you could look at it two different ways. You could, you could make an adjustment to the proposed rate structure that might you know, reduce it, but I don't think it's going to be a linear 10%. Yeah, 
No, you know, yeah. it's not. But I, I hear you totally. So, yeah. you know, one of two things happens. Either you, you choose to move forward with where it is and you incorporate those learned lessons from that connection next year when you have data, mm -hmm. or you make an adjustment now and you, you reevaluate later. Anyways. Neither is wrong. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to meet your budget either way. So, I mean, if you wanted to knock this down by 3%, you probably could and still be safe. I think I think it would be even very appreciative to do that. Yeah. But, you, but, but my, I, my biggest the concern thing is, was, you know, I I don't want to put yourself yes. into a position yes. where we don't have the return retained earnings that we need to be maintaining things. Because that's been the biggest fault Deerfield has had over the years is they've always planned for today and never for tomorrow. Right. I, I kind of feel like, you know, um, that if you know, I would love to reevaluate next year and go, okay, you know, hey, we did see a, a good savings from that. Look, let's let's redo everything. Well, construction kinda, will be done by next year. Right, you can kind of get some good yeah. data, and people will be using the showers. There's no, stuff. there's no wrong answer. There isn't. I don't. You think could that. go. Listen, it's a big step either way. So if it's 33 percent as the as the numbers come out right now, right. Again, this is all average based on usage. Right. Of course. Like my house, like yeah. probably on the higher end because I'm yes. pretty liberal with the lawn and. Everything else are bigger families, but on average, 33%. So you could pull that down to 30. Now, there may be changes in water consumption too. So because the majority of Deerfield's revenue comes from the usage component, we have seen cases where when you do experience a step increase, the customers make some adjustment to what they use. Yes. If you go from 33 to 30, you may decrease yourself a little, I mean, five to seven percent, Dave, is probably the most that I would experience, you know, seeing. Oftentimes, those short-term changes are, you know, like right. I chase my kids around turning the lights off. And then you know, you're somebody's going to, like, get out of the shower, you know, conserve some water. Over time, that tends to fade out, and people kind of go back to where they were. But yeah. we yeah, may see some water changes. Four dollars, <laughs> yeah, you're, you, you trump whatever I'm going through with two boys. So, yeah. Um, but... Listen, I mean, what, what so we, we can certainly do is update like the numbers for well, the here again, these are the projections for, you know, uh, 2022. You're already way ahead of things. So, yeah. you know, yeah. it's just, uh, you know, I'm just asking the questions yeah. now. And it's good. Because yeah. hopefully as we get our systems more functioning, we're adding more customers to our system. That's right. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and it's maybe because, you know, it's... And you're well you know, positioned to we, do that. We definitely want, in some way, try to get 5 and 10 added to the system. So that commercial property down there becomes more valuable mm -hmm. and more usable for the town of Deerfield. Correct. And and as we upgrade and, and make everything run better, you know, with these investments, O and M goes down, and you know, we just, you know, you're not running that fan on the top of that thing, and you know, the most electricity suck in the whole town of Deerfield is. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that I just want to remind us is we went to a four-phase program instead of two to make the cash flow palatable. I mean, right. we have a couple of big steps in there. There's no way around it. Yes. But yes. over a eight to 12 year period, it was it was manageable as you right. kind of offset yeah. inflation, et cetera. One thing to keep in mind is after phase one at the South Deerfield plant, you know, we've, <laughs> we've rebuilt the bionic man, but he doesn't have a heart. Or lungs. Or lungs, you know, and yep. I keep using that analogy Good. because you know, we're doing everything but aeration and blowers, yep. you know, and some anecdotal things at the plant. But, you know, we're having, you know, I don't know if Keith's on the phone, I don't think he's tonight, but he still experiences some pretty awful changes to the flows, which really strain the ear treatment plant. Yep. How he meets permit sometimes, he, he, I, I scratch my head, he's very talented. He's very uh, talented. So relative to that, when you get through phase two, Dave, I agree with you. The sky's the limit in Deerfield, and you have tons of capacity. And right now, what you're doing is you're trying to buy your time with prospective developers until such time as you can complete phase two, and then the heart and the lungs are in place. And South Deerfield plant is, you know, that that trains down the tracks, you know, yeah. full speed, yeah. which is which is a, a luxury as we know. Yeah. To have it. So. it wasn't that many years ago in this village that we had more auditorium on connections. Right. Yeah. Right. Which really stifled things yep. for us. Yeah. So as your as your wastewater advisor, I'd love to see those big connections not really become 
real in terms of wastewater down the down the drain and you know a couple two years three years up yeah. it's up to you to decide and we said we'd come back after the first of the year to talk about phase two yeah that'll be a decision you make do we do we overlap one and two by doing construction and design mm -hmm. in parallel so that you know construction becomes pretty continuous yeah i think that that makes sense but I that's do. up to you and the residents to decide yeah what we can handle you know, if that 12-year plan becomes eight it just means the second step comes a little sooner right okay so that second page, I guess, is really just kind of zeroing in on that. Yeah, this is just a figure to illustrate uh, where we're looking at uh, the increases coming and how they're going to affect the average residential sewer user. So based on your current sewer rate, the average annual residential sewer customer is paying about $903 per year. Uh, back at the annual town meeting, when we presented the phase one and two South Deerfield upgrade to the town, um, and appropriated that money. We projected we would be about $1,116 in fiscal year 2022, and now we're at about $1,133. So you can see we're kind of right where we thought we would be. Um, and then the, the figure on the next page just breaks that down on a monthly basis. And as you can see right now, it's about $75 per month. We projected at the annual town meeting, we'd be at about 93. Now we're looking at being at about 94. Um, so again, yeah. we're right in line and we've really, you know, stayed the course as to where we thought we would be and, uh, you know, hope to be at this point um, moving through these projects. I wish my Comcast bill was only 130. Oh, I know, <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'd sign up for that plan right now. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I'll stop my share here. All right. Great. Well, uh, thank you very much. I really, you know, it's great to, I know we have another um, kind of get together where we'll do We're going to have a day kind of workshop with yeah. staff and it's in depth. Like, anybody's yeah. welcome to come attend, we'd love to have yeah. you. Yeah, um, but get in, in depth. I went through all these. Um, yeah, I put read, you to sleep. It sure. did, yeah. I read yeah. this, um, but. <laughs> that's, the most, that's the most important piece. Yeah, I right guess I didn't get into yet. No, the spec is, you know, a nice paperweight for yep. uh, you know, holding things down on your desk when it gets windy, but um, yep. the basis of design report is really the neat thing. Is that's, that's where we make all the decisions, and then after that, it's just executing the plan. Right. No, it looks it looks really good. I, I had a few questions on the plan, but we'll do that when we meet. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, okay. thank Aaron, you. Yeah, but it's still it works for you. Thank you. Everybody stay safe. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much for coming in. Thank yeah, you. really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Great to see you, Dave. Thanks, James. Thank, thank, thank you both yep. for coming. Take care. Trevor? Yes. Trevor? Yes. What's the sewer rate? We need to vote a sewer rate. Yeah. Because the treasurer needs to know so she can start processing the bill. That's what I couldn't figure out throughout the discussion. This wasn't a discussion. What are we voting for a sewer rate? You're jumping the gun, Casey. For FY21. You're jumping the gun. We haven't done that yet with them. We wanted to hear from them first. So now we're going to have a discussion. I don't know if you can hear that, but. Um, it's further down on the agenda. Right. It's further down on the I agenda. Can hear anything now. Oh, well, it's muted. Trevor's muted. Okay. I am on my computer, yes, but this is okay. not muted. All right. So let's jump down to the sewer rates so we can discuss that. Well, we have. Uh, we've got a couple hearing at seven. Right. But yeah. We've got a couple minutes here. Not hearing. It's, it's we can hear you. Yeah. No, it's just. I couldn't hear what you just said. Okay. So we were, we were, uh, we I'll had to hear. I'll see you in a minute. Come on out. <laughs> Thank you. So Casey, that was a discussion with them. Right. We, we have to sense. we have to set the rates later on in the agenda. We want to still talk about the rates together. But I can't figure out exactly what they're telling us should, the rate should be. It's I right here, sixteen point three eight. Or we can drop it a little bit. Well, that's so. That was. I thought you were going to have that discussion with them and take a vote then. No, so I'm not going to take a vote with them here. I'm going to take a vote with our board okay. here later on. We have a we have a hearing at seven. No, it's not a hearing actually. It's oh. just it's a way it's coming to present the Stillwater Road Conservation okay. Restriction proposal. Gotcha. Okay. Is um, Alan on the. Elaine. Elaine, I mean, excuse me. Elaine, is she on? 
2015 or a little later um, and I remember the water water department was going to do that and we thought it was important because that you know the aquifer is there and the, and um, and it was important to protect that land and I, I'm in favor of that I think we just wanted to run that through um, conservation restriction you know by our uh, town council which I think still needs to happen um, but you know personally I'm in fa I'm in favor of moving forward and protecting that land so I don't actually that lands on the not on the river side of no, still it's water, it's on the opposite side. Yeah, opposite yeah, side of the road. Up, hill side. up the hill side. The uphill side. Yeah, yep. the uphill side. Um, um this is Jeff's question. Sure. Uh, uh, Kevin Scarborough. <clears throat> um my question is, is is with that happening on um, we were in the process, we collectively the, the highway department was in conversation with um, the electric company because we were trying to sit out a little bit of that section where um, so much of the woods on that, that hill, going up the hill, makes that area so uh, shaded. And that's why that part of the pavement doesn't hold up. That's why that part of the pavement is frozen all the time. Yeah. And I'm just curious if we go through this, if 
the thought process of thinning some of the trees on the edge of the road, whether that goes out the window or not. That's just a question. Good thought. Um, yeah, you know, the conservation restriction and, and Don Cavallini from, um, from the power company is also on, um, but so she can pipe in as well. But I believe that the restriction will have standard language in there that, that um, you know, either with the management plan or, you know, for management purposes that trees can be, or safety um, hazards that trees can be um, managed. And so we can certainly look at the restriction and see, um, make sure that that is um, in there. Generally, our, our standard you know, restrictions do not limit forestry. They just um, are either done through a forest management plan or according to the um, mass cutting, you know, the state statute. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Oh, can people hear me? I'm yes, Don. Sure. Yes, we can hear you, Don. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm, I'm Don Tremolini. Sorry I got on late. I was having technical issues. No problem. Um, yeah, so I don't have the management plan in front of me. I was trying to do it as we were talking, but I remember there is some text in there, language about vegetation management. So I will check into it to, to make sure um, we don't have a restriction to, to not do any veg management on the plan, on the property. Um, but I, I made a note to, to look into it to make sure it's, it's something we could do because that is a safety reason too. Mm -hmm. So it, it would be good if we could thin out that one area. Great. Um, I, I, I agree with Trevor. We just have to have our lawyer review it. Um, so it, I think it can be done in a relatively fast, mm. you know, be able to vote on it by next our next meeting. Did you, Did, you, you know, know if the... Uh, you folks would be amenable to maybe the town increasing the, the width of our right of way through there so they can reduce that canopy over the road? Um, increase, I think the right of way is on the um, survey already. No, not the right of way um, going into the property. The, 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 right, the, town, the, oh, the, 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 the town way going down through, the width of it. For still water, you mean? For still water. Just so that canopy can be maintained without having to go to you folks every time Kevin wants to cut a tree. It, it is a safety issue on that corner because of the way the corner is sloped and everything, and it's icy in the w winter. Mm. Yeah, I don't think you. I don't think so. Under the normal conservation restriction, you would have a problem with that day. But we could. I would just. Massachusetts just being as liberal as it is, sometimes you can't cut down a bush without getting in trouble. I know. Trouble. But that's why we're having No, well, yeah, so the Franklin Land Trust is fully supportive of, of um, you know, anything that the town would need to do. I think from the perspective of the restriction, um, and Don, again, you can type in here. I don't want to get into too many specifics today, but I, I, I can certainly say that we would work uh, with the town to, you know, just see whether that's more of a question for the power company, whether the right-of-way easement can be widened before um, the land is given to us and before the restriction is done. So it would be a pre-existing um, right that would go to the, you know, to the, high, you know, the town yeah. or the road. Um, we can check with that. And if that is not the case, then I would certainly say that, um, you know, we can maybe take a walk out there and just kind of have a little more description in the restriction that outlines that the town um, was just noticed to us, which is not, a, to me, I think, not a heavy lift that they can do the maintenance on the, on the you know, roadside. Right. Um, that sounds you know, reasonable. And yeah. we're, we're pretty easy to get along with, so, <laughs> and, and we're not, we're not, um, you know, we're not against um, cutting trees. We, we manage woods on all of our properties that we own. Um, yeah. So, yeah, let's, let's look into that. Okay. And we can, um, you know, get back to you with, with kind of the options. That's great. Okay. And I, I just have a, and I have a quickie question. I don't know if, who had the map up before, but if you pull the map up and just point to me, I, I'm not sure where we're talking. Yep. Right, right along, just where it's, it's, it's right along the Stillwater Road. It's actually the road bank. It kind of comes down before from you get the bridge, to the bridge. As you turn from the bridge and you go up. Uh, cool. Yeah. If, if you cross over the Stillwater Bridge from the north to the south, you take a right, and 
know, like you're heading towards 116, going up that hill on the left-hand side is what we're looking at, trying to thin out a little bit. Okay. Because it's so thick through there, and if, you know, I'm quite sure you've had the opportunity to drive at some point in time, you'll see how it's always shaded, and that's a problem for maintenance, and it's a problem It's a problem for the road itself. Yeah. And that's why, if anybody remembers, that was the worst part of the road before we repaved it. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Um, it gets icy in the winter time. It's always ice up. It's right on that it, corner. It get it gets icy early and it stays icy longest right yeah. there. So, okay. Right. No, that that helps. Thank you. Thank I just you. wanted to make sure I was on the right page. Sure. Great. Right. Okay. All right. So you'll you'll get back. We'll get back to our lawyer and and get this sorted out for our next meeting on the 18th. Okay. Yeah, and we'll, we will give you, I'll, um, Carolyn, I'll send the board and Casey kind of an outline of the next step. So there's some process with this. Okay. Um, and part of it that Casey was just checking in about is just um, normally these projects where it's a conservation restriction, um, the state normally has this where it's, it's, giving, it's being um, given to the town acting through its conservation commission. That just is the language that they do. Um, so we can just check on all of that, and I'm sure the town council will probably be familiar with it. So we'll send you next steps. I know you guys have a busy meeting, so. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so you. much. Thanks for joining us tonight. Yep. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Okay, moving on. Um, we have select board announcements and reports. Um, just a couple agenda items I wanted to um, bring up quickly is um, I cybersecurity. I, I've taken a couple more workshops, and we really, oh God, I hate this stuff, but it's so important. We've got to do some, some things, and mm -hmm. um, I know Casey is just out straight. Yeah. So this last workshop I did, we have to do. You know, we need to do some triage. We need to have a response, start with a response plan if we're hacked and stuff like that. So um, I, I just want to do a small tabletop. And I think what I would like to do is reach out to the police department. Adam Sokolowski is mm -hmm. um, very, um, very knowledgeable. You know, knowledgeable on this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to see if we can work with him to start at least a response and, um, you know, and do a small, not a huge, thing but a small drill with all of us in town hall well there's an immense amount of uh fraud and scams and and yeah. things going on on, on, on all on all levels the hospitals right now are getting their data attached towns are doing that too and having to pay ransom um individuals such as myself are getting hit and everybody is really getting hit with um yeah with unemployment scams, people claiming unemployment on your behalf and you don't even know about it. So there's a, there's a, lot, there's a lot going on right now that we need to, um, I know. especially with COVID. So this is one more thing, and it, it, uh, Karen, is, Karen and I have attended a couple of these. She's attended more than I have because I ran out of time. Yep. Um, but this checklist is how you structure developing your response, your incident plan, mm -hmm. and they put out templates that we can use. Great. So getting some assistance to develop that would be great for all of us because yes. there's the, the, the stakeholders that have a great deal of um, responsibility in responding to an incident like this. Mm -hmm. So the police department's gonna be a key part of that. So if we could get some help on that, that would be great. Great. What I, um, I brought this up on Tuesday at the Homeland Security meeting because remember I had volunteered us as a pilot with the state police to do, you know, yes. like practice, but then COVID hit, state police have just backed off of this totally this year right now, which I totally understand because, mm -hmm. you know, all our town halls are shut down and everything. So, but I brought this up at Homeland Security, so I'm, I'm hoping to move forward with like $100,000 or something like that so that there's a pot of money that um, if we actually want to do stuff, we can apply for the money and get help, you know, outside help to, you know, but we've got to get started. We've got to mm -hmm. do something. So anyway, we're moving forward on this and I'll just reach out. Okay. Um, one of the other things I started to do because um, 
because of the state hasn't had a budget, uh, and you know we were level funded for education, we did not get a hit this year. Remember back, we've had zip code problems that under the new school formula, we're gonna have a $300,000, I think, at least cut in our financial aid from the school uh, state, mm -hmm. which is huge for us. This is horrible. But luckily, even with COVID, there are some positive things, and the positive thing is we were level funded. So I reached out, because you remember you, we started mm -hmm. in January. Yep, it is. Lisa um, Kizwicki. She's the deputy um, bureau chief for DOR, and the only person in the state that can go between DESE and DOR and you know, break Critical. down some of the, she knows she's been around for a long time and we've got to get her because she's going to retire in the next two or three years. So this is it. This is our window. So I started up with her again. I, I reached out. She is going to work with us. And I, um, what we need to do is two prong, as we, we talked about. Um, 01373 zip code. We have to pull out all the Waitley addresses, which is about a third of the zip code and have them, she's going to match it up to the um, income of those addresses and pull them out of our income total. And then, um, so that would adjust us down. Because the problem is we're not, it's not just the educational formula. We're not getting any grants because we're not eligible for anything. And the reason why is because we got too much money. We're taking income of about a third of our, of Waitley, its income is associated with Deerfield. So we've got to eliminate Waitley's income from our total income so we don't look so well off. Then in the, I gotta reach out to John Cordier because we have to go through property by property, but in old Deerfield, we have one of the highest wealth factors of a 350 community, 351 community with number 14 zip code for wealth because we have all the nonprofits that are paying higher salaries and but then they don't pay taxes. So, you know, the property tax doesn't is not reflected back to mm -hmm. the community. So right. we gotta get some kind of waiver on that. So that our total Deerfield combined income towards assessed value, because it's huge assessed values and all that kind of stuff, because I have to work with John Vanier on that. Mm -hmm. And before John decides not to do assessors, because he, again, he has a huge knowledge, um, uh, wealth of knowledge over the years. So we've got to get the system fixed, and, and we've got to do it in the next few months. So because the other thing that we want to do is we need to, I'm, you know, I, Lili is on here tonight, and I want Lili to, we're going to reconstruct and reconstitute our senior housing, because we now have the property. So we need to get our analysis together, we need to get our building assessments together. I know, those and, should be and coming I quick. And I want us to um, reach out to that wonderful architect mm -hmm. that did the presentation over at the elementary school on senior housing and senior center. center. And you know, we have a window, we're not using our senior center. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not safe, so it's shut down. So let's decide, are we going to renovate it or are we going to rip it down? Right. And we need to do it and we in need to do it right In conjunction with away. the church. In the church. And right. this building. I and think it's really important to look at have, this as a whole. Right. It needs to be looked at the whole. We need to. So we need a feasibility study. Right. We need a feasibility study. We, we had need. put in our capital improvement planning committee. Yes. Uh, capital improvement and plan. I, and that's due December 1st. Mm -hmm. So we only have two or three weeks. But Lily's been, Lily and I have been working on this since 1998, 1999. Mm -hmm. Since the last century, right? Right, right Lily? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. we need... Can I make a, can I make a point though? There's of course you can. That, um, that was significant in our, in a building to access the building. Mm -hmm. And that was something that we Yep. Saying that long, um, slash RDI, 
we actually had um, something established and then they had significant turnover in their leadership and as did the town. And um, it sort of just evaporated. So I think that um, it would be very important to take a multi-pronged approach to this. And one would, prong would be the feasibility study. Another prong would be to get a housing authority, mm -hmm. either um, a, some sort of a commitment specifically, get to work with these folks, or build our own community who will play with us, mm -hmm. which I would rather not do. But, you know, I mean, I think that um, because the town can't run it. Correct. When, notice I didn't say it, but I said when we build it, the town can't really run it. And there are also some really exciting models called based on the Beacon Hill Village model where we could do something like create a, um, a set of housing, but that could also operate as this nexus from which we could dispense services and which older adults can participate in as uh, more like a membership model and, and uh, not that sort of something. We've got a short window here and we need to improve our eligibility because um, it's killing us. We're not getting any grants because we just look too good financially and we got too much money in the bank. And Carolyn? Yes. Yes. <coughs> Carolyn, Kevin Scarborough? Yeah. Um, I figured I'd let you know that, that the 16th, which is uh, a couple more Mondays, the, um, the committee that was put together to look at um, the senior center, the church, the town hall, the whole thing here. Um, we're trying to wrap this up. Great. Um, oh, so great. It, it, it can be brought forward to to the town. We wanted to make sure that um, we didn't want to, we didn't, Julie wanted to make sure we just didn't put something out quickly. If you put something right. out too quickly, then, then it may not be accurate, it may not be correct. So yep. we're trying to make sure the I's and dotted the T's across, and so that way when you get the information, it's good ballot information instead of something just from the head. Right. No, that's great. So, Kevin, would we be able to put this on the agenda for the 18th to keep moving on this? Because then there's only another couple weeks before uh, it would be due to the Capital Improvement Committee. That would be that's up to Julie, because Julie's really the one that, that's running the, the program, and she's doing a great job at it. Right. Um, I think really she, 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 she's basically the chair of the committee. Um, and that would be well, a question posed to her. I, I think, you know, so as far as the, this Trevor again, but as far as the, you know, we do have money set aside for um, the church study. We had that a while ago, and some of that money was used for this plan, which was great for this, for this right. um, investigation. But we did, we do also have pending on our capital improvement plan, I think it was $50,000 for a feasibility study. And I think, I don't know if that number is accurate. We just kind of threw a dart because we weren't sure. We kind of said, here's 50,000. So if we combine that with some money that we have, um, get a hold of the architect who did that presentation and really talk about where we want to go with the plan. I, I really want to see a flushed out uh, master plan of, of this kind of block. We've got the library ex expansion that's still kind of in the works, um, I believe. Um, we have, we have the church, the senior center, and this town hall, and, and the school. So, I mean, this we own this whole block, and we should really think about master plan of parking. Know. You know, how do we use this? What do we, you know, think I 50 still really years really out. I would love to do a thermal underground thing. You can share all of that. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. I just think we need a larger 
I don't, um, I agree. I mean, I feel like you want to jump the gun and get moving on, like, no, but that because was it's closed. the grant program that we came across that we thought, gosh, yeah. they would, that would pay for the heating costs I know. of all these buildings. And, um, you know, so that's why we've got to get our zip codes straightened out. We've got to you know, keep lot. moving on this stuff. But, and, yeah. and we need, you know, participation from the public to step up and want to join yeah. these committees to help help move this so forward. If so if anyone is interested, uh, Lily, um, is I snagged Lily, so <laughs> Lily's getting dragged into this. I see um, Rocky on there too. He's, he's second, ready. Second century of work here. <laughs> no. But um, anyway, it would be lovely if we could move forward on this in the next couple months. Yeah. Yeah, we do have do to set a plan anything? for. No, it's just a matter of getting it organized. Yep. Kevin, thank you for that information. Um, we can have. Oh, this is Chris Harris. This is Chris Harris. Hi, Chris. When is the report? on the uh, assessment of the current buildings going to be issued. I think this the, they were talking the 16th, right? Is that, Kevin, that's when you guys were getting together to kind of hear that? The 16th? At least you hear that? The 16th, we're getting together to go through and look at where we're at to make sure that what is put out is, is correct information. So shortly shortly after that, uh, Chris? We're, that's where we're hoping, correct, yep. yes. But again, that's, that's more of a Julie question. question. Yep. I think that's a critical part it is. It is. Yes. Yep. What, what is what were those building promises going to cost? Right. Because that may change the way you look at everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. That's where we started. So yep. you're right. Yeah, we've been waiting and with COVID and all the other stuff. So, um, and, and I appreciate you, uh, Kevin, and your board taking the time to, you know, to get it right and not just rush something out because we really want it. We really want to use it as a starting point for sure. Yeah. So, um, Anyway, there's a lot of stuff we need to get working on. But thank you very much, Lily. I'm really, um, I really want to make sure we're moving ahead on that. Shh, can I get on? And then can I get on? Um, yeah, oh wait, um, you have other Lily things? had one more question. Oh, sure, what? yeah. Go ahead, Lily. Uh, um, is it your intention as a board then to So uh, it's something similar to that. So I think um, I, I think that's almost too narrow because I think we really need, you know, I feel like the the committee that has been senior center yeah been coming together on this building assessment ha has good brain trust there. And if we expand that, or maybe there's subgroups of that that get added to to look at, you know, the senior center, the senior housing, the town hall. Um, you know, the parking, the, you know, just kind of a, get a master plan together so we can really kind of plan where we want to go in the future here. Um, but yes, I, I agree. I think we need to, we need help to do it. We can't all do it, you know. There's it, too many of us on this, too many committees. Over. Yes, and, and you know, our staff is, is literally drowning in COVID paperwork and, and just all the other aspects. It's very hard to get. It, it literally has taken up 80% of what the staff does in this building every day. It's just constantly dealing with that. So it would be great to have community help. I know there's great ideas out there to start moving these projects forward. I know I hear it from the public all the time that these are important things. The sidewalks, the streetscapes, the, the master plan, the what do we do with these senior centers and the housing and buildings. and and because and, people really need to know what a price tag is in the future for all of these things, what we need. You know, I, I hear um, Jeff Upton echoing in my mind, what is a need and what is a want? And, uh, and you know, sometimes those things are the same thing too. And, um, and how do we plan for that and assess those costs to the residents? So you could say, here are your four or five ideas. How should we all move forward? It's not just up to us three to, you know, set that motion, but it's up to the community. So what they want to see their town to become in the next 50 years, I want to see 50 year plan, like of where we really want to go long term, because it, it's going to take a long time to I get know. there. But I, yep. I, I just, it's really, I really important that we move with this Lisa mm -hmm. in the next two or three years to get this, our zip code thing straightened out so we can apply and be more eligible community. Right. Because right now, I mean, every time we apply for something, we get shut down. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah. Um, the, that needs to move on. So. Is there anything else that either one of you? Well, want to I just say? wanted to mention a little bit about budgets. I know um, I might get a shoot from the back room, uh, but, but I want to get started a little bit looking at our budgets, right? So normally we do that right about now. Um, I, I had talked with Darius um, today a bit about the climate and what, you know where we're at. You Nobody know, Tra Trevor, really knows anything at the moment. I, I was just going to say the state doesn't even have a budget. They, do, they don't have a budget for 2020. They don't have a budget. Yeah. Right. So, uh, if we want the school, I mean, I would say Gary last can, number. Whatever, whatever was happening with the last year, let's move forward with that. But that is not any indication, and we have no indication when that's going to be. Actually, Correct. And um, I mean, we we are waiting for budget right now from I last guess. year, from yep. June, from July. I I agree. So I think I think we are a, not going to get a budget until at least December. Right. So and that's just for the current year, let alone you know where we're going next year. So, um, but I, I do still I, I get all that. I do still think we we do have plans of what we want to do right for the right. next year. So it's important to get those going quick because December first gets here and then oh you don't have it on the list nothing happens. So I think it's really important for us to plan out. Our, our plan for next year and whether it's doable or not is a different story and we may say oh that was a great plan but no one's got any money so we wait a year um, but I think it, it is important to start laying out those steps of the bigger ideas of what we wanted to tackle I mean even little things like you know we have to fix that backstop at the elementary school you know there, there's wires hanging out eye level for a kid right now I mean there's safety issues that that need to get thought about, put on the plan, and, and get those things in budgets, and and think about wh what we truly are going to do with sidewalks next year. So I just think I know we don't know where our budgets are, but if we sh should start planning that, and as it relates to the school, I agree. The reason I say this is that other towns are asking the schools to have a budget by January, and um, it's so and and a, and a, and a, and a uh, level funded budget, which. That might be the easiest thing, and it may be that the schools are like, I'd love a, a level-funded budget, because we don't know what the revenue is going to be. It may be less than a level-funded budget. You just don't know, and the, the dynamics of how we educate has changed so much, too. Um, you know, how many people are, are remote by choice now versus coming to school. So there's a lot to work out, um, but I just wanted to talk about that we do need to start. You know, I know that, that tax recap is happening, and you know, but we'll get revenues together fairly soon. So things are starting to move in the right direction. I just wanted to mention that that was a discussion. And um, I, I know that, you know, again, the shoe might come from the back room, but we do need to start a little bit. And I'm happy to help with it. So that's all. Is there anything you want to add to that? Okay. No. I, I just, I don't want Darius to, you know, be putting so much effort into a budget that we understood have, you yeah know, that we just don't have any effort. and I think I think it's carrying that same number is right. probably the easiest thing that we can do right now absolutely yep. okay oh so moving on uh, board of health issues we have COVID updates um, the governor has just come out with new uh, 54 executive order 54 and 55 I think the key thing here is people need to wear masks all the time in any any space outside your home now, yep. whether you social distance or not, I mean you still need to make every effort to social distance. But the outbreak level is going up, so is. we're hoping that we're not going to have more shutdowns. But um, the other big thing is that gatherings at private residences, and this will impact Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. is no more than 10 people in an indoor setting. You can have 25 people outside, so hey, if it's a, one of those really warm Thanksgiving days, you can have a picnic table out in your yard, but... They are, they um, are, you're right, so, they are seeing that most of the increases are these small family functions, that people get together or, or watch parties. a baseball game or whatever yeah. it might be, parties, that's where the spread is coming from. So, this is not something that we can enforce, really, to truthfully, but mm -hmm. we're asking people in, in the spirit of trying to contain COVID is to keep in mind that the governor's order is 10 people for Thanksgiving. And if you have Thanksgiving travel 
and you're going even to the eastern part of the state, if you're leaving our community and going to a less safe place, please, when you come back, take a few days to isolate and make sure that you're not bringing any COVID back to our community. Our number one goal is to keep the schools open. And while we're talking about that, then we'll just um, go right into, there is a revised community health indicator um, that we are looking at. And I don't know if um, Dave and Trevor, have you had a time to look at that? I did, again? yep, I read it. Um, and the main thing is, is they're kind of analyzing, there, there is discussion with the local board of health when we have re reached our numbers, because the indicators before was if there was 25 cases in the county. Well, right. we blew through that the last couple of weeks with clusters that, you know, from parties that were happening in other towns. But they weren't But they were district. not here. We do have community spread more so than before, mm -hmm. um, but it's not affecting our school population. Our school population is safe, and I'm in constant contact with the school administration and that we analyze our cases. What is the profile of the cases? Is there a chance that the school kids, school community, teachers or um, kids are exposed? And, and so far, that has not been the case. Mm -hmm. And we are being very careful about what is happening. And so that's why there's the review of um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. our guidance. And so I would hope that um, we could just vote to approve this. Yes. Um, as a, this revision for um, the schools to use. Because we as a community, our lead community course for the elementary school and, and frontier. for frontier. So yep. Yep. it's critical that we um, sign up. Uh, and there an awful lot of time is put to this to update. And it would probably be good um, to so the consider that we'll probably update it another one or two more times and mm -hmm. get more experience. As we learn. Yeah. yeah. So I would make a motion to approve that um, Frontier Regional School Union 38 updated COVID-19 community health indicators dated October 30th, 2020 for the revisions made. Um, Did you both want to second it? Is there any further discussion? Um, it will be posted on the um, Frontier website, I'm yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, sure, he'll send it out. So, um, once it's approved. So, um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay, um, we have the Tilton Library reopening plan. Um, there's obviously a lot of work put into this. There is. I'm, I'm just concerned, I would rather. The change. Yeah, table this until we hear what the governor's going to do. Um, yeah, I, on the opening. I was very pleased with the plan. I, I obviously a ton of work has gone into it. Um, I too am just a little nervous about with the changes going on now and how how to. Um, it, it, it may be here. I haven't read fully, uh, but I think um, what wondering how we deal with you know more than ten people now. Before that wasn't. It was. It was you know, larger, but now we're at 10 people. And so uh, how do we deal with, would they do a by appointment only um, uh, worry about, you know, uh, if, this, if the library is open, would, would a lot of the kids kind of after school be kind of sent there like before? How do we handle that? Or is it more just, maybe I'd just like to talk to Candace a little bit and find out what she's thinking about how we handle the kids coming over or if they are coming over or if it's just, coming with parents and leaving? Is there, are they calling and making an appointment, that kind of thing? And I, I just want to make sure, um, one of the problems is, of course, is, you know, the, it's gauged on their lower risk, you know, your, the grading of your community. Mm -hmm. And for us as small towns, a couple cases maybe doesn't really affect the schools, but a couple cases will change our color. Mm -hmm. And we really, um, that is, is problematic at this point still. So, um, I don't know. Uh, do you have a problem if we just table this for a little bit? No. Okay. All right. 
you, know, um, you take the case of Buckman, I think they had one case that made it red. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Um, there's, a, no, there's a couple of those, but it did. Does it Casey want to add anything to this? Do you do you feel like that makes sense for right now, or just at least until the next meeting to see where we're at, or waiting for the governor's direction? Well, I think um, Candace isn't going to be happy because she does want to open, but the question of how to deal with intersects between the certain public areas and others is an important question. Um, it may be worthwhile for me to talk to Richard tomorrow and mm -hmm. see if maybe he can get some more information. Um, I will say that most of the town administrators expect to hear more information from the governor's office tomorrow okay. about next steps. So okay. that's one of the things that I do think everybody should keep in mind well, in I terms of you know, where the state's going to go. I, for one, trust, you know, trust that I mean, you've been working with this quite a lot and uh, with all of our reopening plan and, and working with Dick. And I mean, if you feel like you have it figured out and, um, and, and you and Dick are comfortable with that before our next meeting, I'm, I'm OK with that. Um, well, we have a meeting on the 9th. Yeah, so won't be too far away. Um, we could address it at the ninth. We do have executive session on the ninth, but we okay. can address that as well. Yeah. She gives us a couple of days. She did want to be open to, she wanted to be open by next week. So that's why I say she may not be happy. On the other hand, it's a valid question. So I will try to talk to her. What's okay. And um, just relay what the concerns were. Okay. Yeah. So I trust you to guys, you know, to work that out if you need. If you need some flexibility there, I'm okay with that. Okay, I'll add it to the agenda for the night. Okay, thank you. All right, um, uh, Casey, I have a MAPCO meeting at 4.30, so I will just zoom in for 5.30, okay? Mm -hmm. um, all right, so moving on, um, we have the MOU with um, uh, it's about $125,000 a year to that Cat Allen gets for um, drug abuse. And she's been doing a wonderful job over the years. And Deerfield is one of the uh, cluster communities mm -hmm. that she works with. Oh, she's with. amazing. So, she's amazing with her kids. Uh, and yes. knowledge. So we happy need to, do that. to vote that MOU. Okay. Is there a heading on that I can make a motion for? Or? Yeah, I have, to, I have to find which one it is. I think this is it. Uh, it is the FRS sub grantee agreement for COVID-19 expenses. Okay. And then there's there's another one, which is the care, communities that care mass call three grant, which is I think what Carolyn just said. It sh should be in there. Yeah, that was a whole bunch. Right. There was so much printing and so many issues with the printing tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, one was for, right, was for the, um, was our was our invoice that we we had set up that MOU with Furcock, right? Is that one of these that we're paying, I and then the or is this an, a different MOU? No, the FRS MOU is to because the um, Frontier Regional oh, for Frontier. is a separate public entity. Thank you. We have to create a sub grantee memorandum of understanding. Mm -hmm. It's similar to what we did with Furcock. Right, but and, and that was. It, it, and that would be okay, the is. COVID-19 expenses submitted through Darius and Shelley's office yes. for about $49,000. Authoring me, um, authorizing me to sign yep. this Massachusetts Collaborative for Action, Leadership, and Learning, okay, so, Mass Call 3. So just to clarify, there are, there are two things we're signing. Mass Call, there are two. There are two. So yep. the Mass Call 3 is the one with FERCOG for, for Kat Allen and, and her work. And I will make, yeah. a, make a motion to approve it, um, to uh, uh, approve our chair uh, to uh, sign the uh, Massachusetts Collaborative for Action, Leadership, and Learning um, MOU with the FERCOG. Dave Wolf, second. Okay. Um, is there any further discussion? Don't. All right. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolf. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Um, I'll make a second motion uh, to to approve the uh, FRS sub grantee agreement for COVID nineteen expenses um, between Frontier Regional and uh, the town of Deerfield. Second. 
for their COVID expenses through our CARES Act grant? Uh, I'm going to find that which is the one. That one should have several signatures. Casey, I'm not sure if I have um, a sticker. I'll be right out. Okay. Sticker for that. I have the DP one. Oh, here it is. Oh. I've got it here. All right, we've got it. Um, I mean, it's. Uh, she might have one because it's. Oh, no, here it is. Two pages, three pages. Okay. Yeah, I, I found it. one in there, so it. I think that's it. There's so. Yeah, but yeah, what happened to one? the folder? Over here. The folder is that's where everything is. is in the folder. I just, so see. this is this is the uh, this is the recycling one. Yeah. This. Yeah, but I don't find this one. Yeah. I put it in here earlier. <laughs> Well, it doesn't matter. Doesn't we've, got, matter. we've got it here. So we're going to Well, I, let me get you a copy to sign. You can sign it in a minute. I'll print it out. Okay. Okay. So, uh, oh, this is for transferring money over. Uh, there's $14,496 for cleaning supplies, $5,761 for personal protective equipment, $526 for social distancing materials, $29,034 for distant learning equipment and support that we are sending to the school district. So from our CARES grant. From our CARES grant. Yep. You're gonna make a motion? I made the motion. I'll second. Uh, and okay, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? I Trevor McDaniel. I Dave Walker. And I Carolyn Ness. Okay. And just just for the public, so um, Casey and um, uh, the, the team looked at our expenses and made sure that we had and we had applied for this grant money to be able to deal with these expenses through the town and uh, and through the schools. The schools didn't get as much money, even though they needed a lot of money to, to make sure that they could educate safely and, and open our schools. So this is helping through our grant money that we got to the schools. Okay. And we're helping uh, Deerfield Elementary, but that's part of the town anyway, so we don't need an MOU for that. And this is the part for Frontier that we're helping with, and as are the other towns, Sundle and Waitley, Conway are doing the same. Okay. Um, she might be printing another one. Yeah, all right. Well, Close time. Yeah, that's fine. Sign. She might need to have two. Do you yeah. need two, two of those to be signed? Okay, what? Do you need two of those to be signed? The yeah. FRS one? Yeah. It's okay, we'll sign two. We'll sign two. We'll sign two. I just wanted a clean copy. Yep. All this right. one is the mass call. So you need a second one right now? Yeah, we probably should, just so they have an example. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's... Yeah. Um I'll send one to show. Um thank you for doing that. I really appreciate it. I that was a group effort. It was. Uh, you know, sure, great. I want to make sure it was a group effort. We had a pow out of the day. Okay. So the next item on the agenda is the historic Deerfield flood evacuation plan in Deerfield River. Oh, well, let's do the flood evacuation plan. This is. Um, so those are the two plans that came up last time, and you wanted more time to review them. Thank you. Um, this re triggers me uh, in memory of uh, the FEMA ha the FEMA letter that goes to our hazardous mitigation plan. Did you understand that? I am talking to Kimberly about it. Kimberly no confess. She hasn't responded to me. I sent it to Kimberly so we could dissect it. We had talked about it before because right. there was a holdup and that response that we received was they're, hey, we forgot to send this to you, so what do you need for more information? And that's what Kimberly needs to help me with. Okay, well, I want to make sure, because we did, we went through town meeting, and we voted the floodplain update. Correct. And, and this and this has to do with the floodplain insurance. So again, Correct. it's only about a couple dozen houses, but if we don't get this straight, their insurance is going to be like I know that. triple and or quadruple of what they are already paying. I know that. So this is huge, huge, huge. So um, 
It doesn't impact a lot of families, but it does impact several. There's a lot of people that are actually in the floodplain. Well, um, I know, but you know, some of them don't have insurance. Well, until I can talk to Kimberly, I won't know what else we need to clarify. Okay. Um, because I she and I went over that letter twice before we even mailed it the first time. Okay. I just want to make sure it doesn't get screwed up, though. Well, I will do my best. No, no, no. I just just put it on a tickler so it doesn't fall through the cracks. Yep. That's so why I sent it to Kimberly so she could help. <laughs> well, I mean, if you all of a sudden you get a bill for, for $10,000 that you didn't anticipate, you would be a little upset. Oh, yeah. I would be so, upset, so. Um, you know, so. If, if someone's paying two thousand dollars now, or a thousand dollars, and they see that those numbers multiply, well, that's why it's part of the hazardous mitigation plan mm -hmm. update, mm -hmm. so that we can clarify those things. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, this is part of the MVP plan that we got the grant. Uh, I was on this committee with John Patrick and uh, the nonprofits up in Old Deerfield. This is based on. Uh, having no evacuation plan if an Irene hit. As you remember, Irene hit when um, school, you know, at the end of August, mm -hmm. uh, before the kids, the week, a week before the kids came back to school. So there was Look no out. kids to evacuate. But um, the, we have three, once, once there is a dam failure or like what happened in Irene, you have three or four hours there's not enough time to bus everybody out of Old Deerfield. So the, this plan is basically you walk the kids across the street and up to Eagle Brook. Yep. And all the tourists get, you know, move out, mm -hmm. you know, and so there was a lot of work put into it. No, there was. It's a good plan. We're, I make a motion to, to approve okay. this plan. All right. I didn't know if anyone wanted to discuss it. We, no, I the, think um, I'll second that. Okay. The only, just want to mention that we were supposed to practice the notification, we had a tabletop drill. I got $38,000 from Holland Security. It got extended, so hopefully we can do it when um, COVID next year for, you know, mm -hmm. it'll probably be sometime in, I don't know, maybe September of next year. Yep, um, if we're lucky. Yeah, depending on COVID. Um, so that we can sit down and have mm -hmm. a tabletop drill to do uh, the notification, because this is pretty really serious. It is. So, yep. um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfer. Uh, aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay. Um, Casey, that was approved unanimously. Um, the flood, the Deerfield River floodplain land conservation plan. Um, this, this, this is again. Uh, under the MVP, it's to um, identify parcels in the floodplain that are not under conservation restrictions and that we should have to um, address at some point through Deerfield Land Trust or, you know, people willing to do this. We're putting it under 61A. So, and this is not. Um just to clarify, this isn't Deerfield taxpayer money going to purchase land, right? This no, is no, this identifies the parcels. That, that would allow, that, it allow like a, like like a land Deerfield trust or something, or something to, to, to kind of it. have access to. This, to is, this is analysis of who owns the land mm -hmm. in the existing floodplain. Yep. The floodplain has not changed, but um, this is just to identify what um, is okay. what's in the floodplain. So I would take a motion to have this approved. So I'll make a motion to approve the land trust, uh, land conservation plan for Deerfield River floodplain for the town of Deerfield, Massachusetts. It was uh, was dated June 30th, 2020, prepared for the town by Conservation Works LLC. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? Nope. Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wilson. I currently mess. I want to thank you know everybody that was involved with this, Chris Curtis, yeah, and, and it was all of it was a, lot of, a lot of a lot of work from a lot of people. Yeah, it so, was. It was. Thank you. But it's it's a thing on our checkoff list for the hazardous mitigation plan. Yep. Makes it eligible for more money. Um, okay. Is. Next item on the agenda is the light pole banner. Carolyn. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. The light pole banners is actually an Eversource permit, so Kevin's going to be working on that with them. Okay. 
but we had to approve it. Um, right. We voted to approve it, and the, initially for a certain and date. for a certain uh, time. You know, like time frame. So what we are doing, Casey, is extending the time frame from our point of view. Okay, from the select board's authority. So I make a motion to, um, based on the the. the Correspondence with um, Stork Deerfield, right? They they were the ones doing this. Um, right. Mm -hmm. um, they, they were shut down. It was actually sent to Kevin. That's why I'm confused because yeah. Kevin tells me it was actually sent to him. We were copied on it. We but no, we approved, we approved it. an Eversource permit. We approved no, this we approved every year. It. They have to still run it by us to put banners on in the town. Yeah. It's it's our approval, Casey. We already gave them a permit. We gave them a permit last year. Yeah. But and it year was before. only it was only for one year. But because of COVID and they've been shut down uh, this entire year, that they would like us to approve it for this coming year. And I, I don't and have a problem up. with yep. doing it. because um, COVID's gonna keep them shut down into next year. So I, I would make a, a, a motion to approve the light uh, pole banner permit extension pursuant to their approval from Eversource uh, to extend that um, ability to keep those up uh, through the rest of the year. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Gable. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Um, they still have to get an uh, Eversource permit, Casey. Okay, or Verizon, actually, it's off, it's whoever's poles or those lights poles, okay? You know, the lights that it hangs on? So those particular poles belong to every source. Okay. okay. Light poles are not cell phone poles. All right. Okay. Well, Thank you. Those, those poles, um, they have to get a permit still from Eversource, but we also gave them a permit. So, but don't worry about it. It's for this coming year. Um, Appointment request for the Recreation Committee. There is an, uh, an opening, and we have a recommendation. Would you make a um, recommendation, Trevor? Yes, I'd love to make a recommendation for, uh, I'm not, not great with that, with last names, but for uh, Gretchen but, uh, Bysuski. Yeah. Um, I'm really Bysuski. Okay. See, I told you I've <laughs> heard Trevor. that name. But um, I'm really excited to, to um, to appoint her to the recreational committee, um, she's su such um, such she's a nice person, to... great personality, she very coaches. enthusiastic, coaches, very, very uh, just a great, great person to be on the committee and um, help that committee um, yeah. with recreation. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so the recreation committee had had recently accepted a resignation uh, from a member and, and searched for a new one, and they um, the committee unanimously recommends that. Uh, Gretchen be appointed, so um, yeah, we're looking looking forward to have her. Okay, David, would you uh, second that? I'll second it. If, it. if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, David Wolfe. I, Carolyn Ness. Thank you very much, Gretchen. Yes, that. offering to help. Um, installation of deer on the South Deerfield um, Common, the lighting of the common. Um, I just want to say it was really nice, um, you know after Halloween of November 1st there to have a little vigil out on our common for just bringing light into the community and bringing us together. And I am hugely supportive of lighting the common when you, now with COVID, I'm not driving through town, you know, like four nights a week. It's only like once or twice a week or less, but it's still really wonderful when you do go through town to see everything lit up. And yeah, the uh, so Deb and we need to figure out how we're going to do this. Um, Deb Dacious and Denise Schwartz and all the women from the South Deer Women's Lincoln Club. Kowski and yeah, the, everybody um, has been wonderful. really, really got this moving. And and I would um, I would like to just mention to people if you would invest in a deer and put it on your lawn or or any other place, or if you don't have a lawn you wanted to donate it to to a place to to put it up. Um, it's really kind of neat to see the herd grow over the years. Uh, they had been working on this for the last several years, and it, it's such a nice, welcoming, cheerful thing to see the herd of deer light up across across um, all over Deerfield. Um, 
and I think they would be looking to do this the week of uh, the week before Thanksgiving, and uh, and I well, think working yeah, with Kevin and some I others, we're hoping to, to get the trees lit a little yeah, bit too. Um, oh, and well, there, the, there is um, we have a wonderful volunteer, and so uh, is Kevin still on? Kevin, are you? Yeah, on? Kevin's on. He um, also had secured a tree. Yeah. Uh, oh, just a green okay. tree to put up uh, because we keep putting up, you know, ones that are already cut. So uh, he's got it marked with dig safe and is going to install um, you know, a live tree um, that could could stay there for a while. And if we feel like we need to move it when we do the common project, we'll be happy to do that or move it to another spot. But at least it, we wouldn't be killing a tree every year. We'd put one in and it could stay there for a little while. Um, and uh, Jason Clark is um, and. Um, his wife Melanie have been instrumental in doing in selling these lights. So, um, Kevin, do you feel like it's going to be um, possible to work with um, Jason and Melanie to to get these lights up pretty soon? Because we we can't have um, we really can't have a lighting ceremony this year. But I would like to get them up as soon as possible. Just so. Well, actually, <clears throat> actually, the lights are already up. <clears throat> yes. the, only ones, the only lights that haven't gone up yet are the ones that will be going on this evergreen tree that we plant on Monday. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Um, Monday. Nice. Yeah, Monday. Monday is the day that, that the dig safe will be good. You know, we, we got the tree from Wine, 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 Wow, yep. I can't say their name. Anyway, kind of happy. And the, and the reason why is because, you know, it was always seemed like it was, well, we're, we're not really going to do a tree, and then it was all of a sudden, like, yeah, here's a tree, and then when we go to put it up, uh, it, it, it looks bad. It looks, you know, we've got cables all over the place trying to hold the thing up. Um, it just looks, it just looks bad. Mm -hmm. So that's why we decided, you know, we're just going to bite the bullet, we're going to put it in. I know that the, the, the common committee has got ideas. I know they've got somebody that's out there that, that's professional that's going to be putting something together. Mm -hmm. We're throwing something in the ground for here for now. Like Trevor said, we can let them move it later on. That's what we did. But at least this way, it's going to look a lot better. Um, as far as, as lighting, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, the only recommendation I would have would be if they want to go ahead and put some. Um, greenery around the uh the, thank you the fountain yeah. that it be uh, not lit this time correct the fact is uh, because of what it is because of the way that the, the, the breeze always blows um that gfi always pops there's, yeah. there's no sense in trying to do it and then when we go ahead and try to take the stuff apart um you know you gotta bust open the ice to get the cables out it's, it's yeah it's quite a little nightmare no, I agree. Um, the, the lights have been removed from that crab apple tree. Yep. Um, Jason was great enough to be able to go ahead and try and take care of that. Right. So uh, uh, that should be coming down shortly. Okay. So the other, like I said, the other trees I already have them in it. Um, but while we're talking about this, Jason is came up with. Jason and I talked probably about two weeks ago, and, and his thought is, is is it would be great if. The lighting of the common was taken out of quote unquote control of the town as far as money is concerned. Um, he would like to see if we can, and, and I don't want to say names because we haven't finished doing stuff, but long story short, we're trying to get hooked up with a nonprofit so that way the funds that are coming in are going to the nonprofits that have absolutely nothing to do with the town, so that way there can be there can be no controversy as to whether Town funds are being utilized for a light that somebody in town doesn't like, um, and it can increase. Uh, Jason basically ran the program in Florence. They had nice um, little uh, power drop downs off of each of places where they had lights, you know, so you can have trees or stars or, or something lit on the poles to make it so it's a little bit nicer compared to just looking at all the ugly wire that we have. Um, so that's kind of the direction we're, we're kind of heading towards that um, I, I briefly filled Trevor in on this afternoon just probably about half hour before the, the meeting. So yep. that, that's kind of our thought process, but to make a long story short, yeah, uh, there should be no issues with the light in common. Right. Um, 
Thank you. I, 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 like, I, I, I like to see it. Yeah. Oh, I, I think it's wonderful. So, Kevin, do you think you can turn it on pretty soon, this, you know, this month? I actually was thinking... I, 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 I can go out and turn it on in about 20 minutes if you want. Yeah. So, well, it's, it's not a big deal. It's just a matter of going over there and just straighten it in the back up. Oh, well, yep. I don't know how so. you all feel, but um, next Wednesday is Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really a time to honor all our, you know, people that served in the armed, armed forces. and. Mm -hmm. Um, made sacrifices and did things, and it would be nice to have it lift that day. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of sacrifice. Yes, that would be wonderful. So maybe for next week, Kevin, because we have a stretch of really nice weather and we don't have to worry about um, snow, snow you plowing snow or anything like that, or freezing rain. It can turn in a minute, as you know. I, I don't know. So do you think that would be possible? Yeah, so so you're, you're asking to have it be available to be lit on the 11th? Yeah, I, if, if you can okay. manage it. Right. I, I, I only felt yep. like... And I think, and then I think, and, uh, and it may be that the uh, women's club were planning on doing the deer uh, uh, the week before Thanksgiving, and that's that's fine. That you yeah, know, it can be two separate things. So yeah, I, I just feel like it would be wonderful to light the common, and how wonderful to do it on Veterans Day. Yeah. So if I, so if I light the common on the 11th, is it staying lit through yes. the season, or am I or am I lighting it up on the 11th and shutting down until? No, uh, no. Do the, oh, no. Right. I, I just want to yep. clarify. I just want yep. to make sure. I, I, I kind of wanted to go through Valentine's Day or something. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 Fourth of July. The bill, I'll keep the on that. That's no problem on, on my I, end. I feel like so. Veterans Day to Valentine's Day. One we thing need we could do to we light up, we light have, up the we darkness. Need light. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we need light. We need happiness. We need community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you to the women's I'm, club and everybody that's involved yeah, with I'm, this. I'm, yep. Kevin, I'm not trying to press you, but I was just thinking it's such lovely weather between now and next week. Um, you know, that's good because we're still trying to play cleanup from the, from three storms ago. I know. I know. We're, we're, I know. we're, we're, still, we're still chipping. We'll, we'll be chipping well into January. That's been a rough, rough year uh, already. I know. The wind has been uh, brutal. Kevin, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm sorry. For us, every, every time, every time we get a storm, you know that puts off uh, everything we planned on doing for minimum three to five days. Mm -hmm. You know this last storm that came through, slammed us pretty hard. You know, I've got, I've got uh, for about well, fifty-two hundred dollars tied up just into clearing that small section of Cullen Farm Road, the dirt road. Wow. Um, because we, we had to bring a contractor in to take care of it because it was six hundred and eighty feet worth of trees that came down that. If, if highway, if we tried to do it, we'd be there for a week and a half, two weeks. They were there with a the crane. They had, they had a couple of dump trucks. It was, yeah. it was quite a production to be able to reopen that road. Yeah. Um, so, which is, which is, you know, it hurts my tree budget pretty hard, but yep. it is. Yep. Uh, While we're that. speaking of trees, um, uh, Chief and I met with um, an arborist to walk the property here. We have large, beautiful trees here. Um, at Town Hall, but they are wreaking havoc with the building because of they're overhanging the cars. They're just they're just a huge liability to the building. To um, and, and they're just kind of a bit overgrown. They need to be skirted a bit. And there's some, you know, we're looking at repaving and stuff. And one's right in the middle of our paving plan. So um, we looked at some of the other trees that are along the front that are that are dying. You know, the old maples that are that are just you know they've been hacked off halfway because of the the power lines and they lost half their solar panels because the leaves are gone and and they're already a, a species that's dying there is an ash um, that's in front of the um, the senior center that we can treat and because the ash borer beetle is coming on up through and it's going to take out every ash tree in new england um, and and but if but he can treat it if he hits it a couple of times with uh, a protectant, that, that ash could stay. And it's a valuable tree. That ash will become more and more valuable because it'll be so, you know, there's not going to be as many. So um, it's a good looking tree. So I think he's going to put together a budget for us as far as maintenance, uh, what we want to do with skirting these trees 
if some need to come down, what we do with that lumber. You know, I had some ideas for what we would do with that. But um, so, anyways, he's going to put a proposal together after we walk the property and right. see what we need to do. I, I mean, I feel like that's a legitimate reserve transfer request from, mm -hmm. the, from the finance committee because yeah, I mean, uh, this, we haven't budgeted. They're beautiful pin oaks. They won't be there in. 40 or 50 years, they're just, you know, they are old trees, they're certainly 80, 100 years old. Um, so they're, you know, they have a lifespan. But so, as Chief was talking about, and we were talking with the arborist, that it's important to start planning for 30, 40 years in the future as well. So we wanted to take some uh, funds and, and with our tree, um, tree plan that we had done, the study, uh, would be to take species that are going to be good here in this climate coming forward in the next hundred years and start planting as we remove other trees that we've already planted others to become mature and, you know, just start planting that around the building um, and start moving forward on some of that stuff. So we'll get an estimate and a whole whole written out plan on Kevin, that. Kevin, um, would you be able, when you talk to the arborist next or, you know, you happen to get the plan from him, can he just recommend what tree varieties um, mm -hmm. to plant because we had suggestions from the study, but I I wanted to like verify, you know, like get a couple of second opinions on that because it was clear we had to diversify our Can't um, be all maples. Tr uh, tree tree belt because it's mostly maples. But we gotta I wanna make sure that we're really picking the right mm -hmm. variety. And, 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 and it's been changeable since we had that grant and with because of bugs, extra bugs and stuff. When we replace like the maple on the corner out here, we we move it back and do a tree at a height or a, a width that isn't going to be getting hacked off halfway in 40 years from now because of the power lines. It just we've got to think you know a little smarter about where they're put and uh, uh, that's good. Idea. Different types, you know. Exactly, and that's part of the problem is is with. Um, talking with, with Jay Miller, you know, he's made it clear that, well, okay, well, if we're going off of this plan, you know, you go on to, we're going to say, um, um, graves or not, anyway, uh, you, you go in and, and you're trying to put big trees, two big trees in, in somebody's front yard, yep. um, that really should only be one tree. Right. Um, you know, and, and some of the species that they're looking at are being planted, quote unquote, underneath the power line. Yeah. To have uh, an 80 foot uh, growth. Yeah. You know, make any so, sense. so there, there's a lot of things that were done because of climate, but and I'm probably gonna say this the wrong way, but I'm just gonna go and say it. But a lot of common sense is have to have come to play on this. Yeah, I agree. What we're gonna Yep, I agree with that completely. But we if we're really working with that. this guy, hopefully he can help us out a little bit more. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Oh, sure. Exactly. He's great. No, I agree. Seen, Trevor seemed to think he was really good. Yeah, so. he's very smart. We'll see his report and uh, see what see what it looks like. Okay. All right. Um, um, this is uh, Chris Harris. Hey, Chris. Yes. Hi, Chris. Yeah. Could I make a comment on, on the trees, etc.? Because it's obviously a big issue with maturing trees and, and dying trees, frankly, mm -hmm. throughout this whole area. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, it's a combination of insects, disease, climate, salt, yep. yeah, salt. close to roads, and soil, and the soil, the uniqueness of the soil around here in this town. And so, so yeah, I think a, a more thought needs to go into that, because trees can get into big money, either yep. maintaining them, taking them down, or replacing them. And I think it should be integrated also with your building survey, too, in terms yes. of what are those landscapes, what are those campuses, going to look like in the future. Right, that's a um, great point. Maybe some of those trees will have to come down when you reconfigure how you use the property. Yep. And yep. then new trees go in. Right. No, yep. it's a good point. It's all fair yep. Thank you, yeah, Chris. Thank you, Chris, because yes, it's absolutely true. Um, we had talked about that. We wanted that landscape plan, a walking path, and all that kind of stuff. Put in yep. Um, okay. Next item on the agenda is the Town of Hatfield van. Yeah. Um, that's just acknowledging to us a gift. The gift and that it is as is. And again, it is an as is van. This is really um, this is a item that was given to the town through the work of our uh, director at working with her network. Um, Christina Johnson reached out and uh, 
you know, we have a real need for transportation for our seniors. Obviously, today it's not in high demand because of COVID, but you know, before this all happened, we really were looking at increasing our budget for transportation to get our seniors to to shows, to dinners, to doctor's appointments, that kind of thing. And um, a lot of other senior centers have transportation. We live in a unique area because we're in connection with um, Sunderland. Uh, Waitley and Deerfield utilize FRTA. Sunderland uses PBTA, and they don't work together. Uh, so we're having some trouble with that. Uh, we're trying to work through those issues. But anyways, this was going to be like a training wheels. So we wanted to get a van. Um, understand a plan. Uh, Christine has developed a plan on how we would implement using it. Um, but it, it is a used van. I mean, it, it definitely, you know, it has some, it had some front end damage at one point. It's got some rust on the thing. But really, it's, I think it will serve the purpose to kind of give us a good blueprint of what we want to do for investment in the future. So, and, and it's free. So, with, other than the insurance, and obviously, you know, we'll have to deal with, you know, training somebody to, to drive and all that kind of thing. But, um, we all felt the board at the oh, board One of the reasons site. I brought it up, Trevor, is because there is some damage to it. So yeah, I just saw We don't that. know what that's going to cost. Uh, yeah, so, and, and that, I just saw that in the report today because I was under the impression that it was in, in, in good shape. So, um, you know, again, we thought we would look at, take a look at this van if it was something we could use great um, if, if we had to unload it because for some reason we would just donate the thing away or you know you could do all those you know it's not a big investment to us to really look at how we you know how we could use it if it can be used if it has some serious structural problems we'll take a look at that and find out you know is it worth worth investing in or not to keep it going but we thought it would be good for a you know again as a starter vehicle to figure out how we would use it and, and get moving since it was free to the town. Hi, Trevor. Can I just add, this is Christina Johnson. Hey, Christina. Uh, I just want to add, I'm shocked to hear about the damage. Yeah. I was told it was in perfect shape. Yeah, so it's Like good. all along, I, and I was sent, you know, the vehicle records and everything. So what is it, Casey, that you found out today? So the letter. No, I didn't find it. I found it out. Um, they sent a full disclosure letter to us. Yeah. And it's got a little bit of damage. And so we don't, I don't have a mechanic. Right. Well, Chuck so could look at it. I just wanted it. the board to acknowledge the full disclosure. Yeah. So and I don't I know think, what it looks like. So, so here's what it says. Okay. I was just wondering. So that wasn't ever mentioned. It wasn't mentioned to us either, but the town of Deerfield, through its Board of Selectmen, have declared a 2011 Ford van formerly used by the Council of Aging for transportation services as surplus property, a recommendation from our Council on Aging Director um, that South County Senior Center is in need of a vehicle. The town is glad to gift the van to the town of Deerfield as is. Uh, for the purpose of full disclosure, the van has some rust and suffered some front end dam frame damage. So we probably would, before we, you know, register this thing and move forward, we just have a look-see at the thing and say, is this worth moving forward with, or should we just unload the thing? So um, when you get into frame damage, you know, if that thing is, you know, track it down the road, it's not gonna be safe. But if it's just, you know, something minor, you know, that that's fine, but, um, so that that was never disclosed to anybody. I know it wasn't disclosed to you, Christina. So um, that yeah. just came out in the in the list right now. So we were on the impression that it was just you know used and they got a new one, so they were moving forward. So we'll have to get a little bit more information on that, obviously, before we we take it in and um, you know look at registering that thing and all, all that. So Trevor, yes. Yeah, it's Rocky. Hey, Rocky. Is it a handicap van? Yes, it is. Yep, it has a wheelchair accessibility, and um, you know, it's not a you can't fit a ton of people in it, but it could be used. We thought for you know, get, p picking somebody up and taking them to the center if there was something going on, or to a doctor's appointment, or it's several really, people out to a. It's show. really what it is. Is a concerning for doctor's appointments and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it's getting harder yeah. and harder for our seniors to have. You know, people help them ride, especially <coughs> especially now as a lot of the practices, you know, have moved to Springfield. It's yeah, it's a much more serious endeavor to get to um, appointments. In Springfield. So if the van worked, we thought, you know, let's see how it played in, and is it something that we should, as three towns, invest in for our 
for our seniors, or is there another model that we can work on? But we, we you know, this piqued Christina's um, ears because they said, hey, it's free and it's a handicapped van, and we used it and it was fine. But you know, so we'll just see what, what that frame damage is. If it's minor, that's fine. If it's, you know, if it puts everything out of alignment, and we're burning off tires. It makes no sense. So, yeah, we'll we'll see what that's all about. Um. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is um, the request for comments on the CBA. Um, I I actually called Bob Walden and talked to him about the singular wireless um, additional antennas because I wanted to make sure that um, structurally there was no issues. I mean, we had all the applications, but you know. I, yeah, it's pretty technical. So uh, anyway, uh, he said there was no issues with the uh, wireless. Right. There were um, correct. There were three applications. three applications, right, for us to look at. Yeah, yeah I was fine with the um, looking at those. I was fine with the um, the one for the tower uh, that was for. Uh, singular wireless, yeah, for yeah. Old, old Pine Nook Road. Yeah, to add additional antenna. Yep. Um, so I guess our comments, um, I would make a motion that our comments were that we, uh, the select board has, has no issue with that. Right, okay. Um, Trevor? Yes, any questions? Uh, yeah, Kevin Scarborough. Hey, Kevin. Hey, I, I just think I'd let you know that on, on, on mine, that when I filled it out, I made sure that. I wrote in there, it was perfectly clear that that road is a uh, non-maintained road by the yep. town. Yep. And, and any upgrades or whatever that is needed to be done to get up there, to do whatever the work that needs to be done is not to be done by the town, That's done by them. Thank you, that's a good point. I know that came up with other issues and other entities that were maintaining towers up there, right? They were expecting us to, right. to do all kinds of repair to the road and that, that wasn't our issue. Um, that was that was their um, choice. So Kevin, do you think we should put that on the actual thing just the to comment. Make, just as a comment? Uh, you, you may want to just yeah. that way they okay. see it from two different places instead of just me. Thank you. Okay. Yeah that's a good point. Okay, so we'll add that. Yeah. So okay. it'll be Trevor, yep. are you writing that so down? yeah so uh, no issue uh, no, with, no maintenance. With, um, with, the, with the antenna, uh, but um, road access. access and maintenance. Is this the tower off? Uh, it's the not. Rock? Correct. Yeah, old Albany Road. Yeah. Or old Pine Nook Road. Yeah, yeah, no, it's old Pine Nook. It's not, not uh, on the old Albany. Yeah, so, I, so I wrote um, no issue with the antenna yeah. um, additions, um, but no, but road it's access, up the road, though. but road access um, and maintenance is, is not the responsibility of the town. Is that correct? Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, old Main Street. Um, so. I talked to Bob about this one as well because this has been brought before uh, ZB. Uh, you know, we've seen this three or four times, three times, anyways. Uh, and I think the last time they withdrew without prejudice because they, I think they had the application incorrect, um, what they were asking for. So they, they fixed that and they adjusted the size of the addition to not be encroaching on the neighbors. And um, while the building is um, a non conforming lot now, and this makes it more non-conforming um, I don't I, I think he was Bob was really leaving it up to the ZBA to see if they wanted to offer that and I think I, I think we would do we objection. would do the same I, I don't have objection either other than um, you know I, I would let the zoning board have their you know whatever they think is correct is fine yeah I, I was just gonna say I'm not aware of any um, no, exactly, and it's okay. just to get some space for the family, I think, so. Yeah, um, then there was the Talega um, Appeal on 125 North Main Street. I, I, the appeal is a loss. Yeah, I don't really have... Um, I don't understand why it's coming to the court board. Yeah, it was well, going it back to the... To the ZBA. Oh. Oh. Yeah, they were, they were, um, they were appealing the Z, the uh, building commissioners 
assessment that they've been in violation because they have a an apartment dwelling right. that they didn't get a permit for to build in the first place, and that, um, that and the zoning does not allow for accessory apartments. <coughs> now, I but I wanted to say um, long term, I would like to work with the planning board and petition people together to start looking at changing our zoning to allow for accessory dwellings um, or accessory dwellings slash um, kind of in-law apartments because I feel like especially in today's age with coronavirus and even before coronavirus it takes an extended family to raise a family nowadays it's really difficult before you had you know maybe one person was out in the workplace now it takes two and they're doing maybe four jobs and and it's hard to raise a family and you do need that help and 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 sometimes families are you know, maybe they're moving away and the, the parents are getting a place in another area, but they come back for a certain part of the year and, and help with the family and they don't want to get a, you know, a whole other house. They just, they want to live with their family and help raise their family. And I think, I think we need to move back to that as a, as a society of taking care of each other. And um, so I'd like to see that, that change. Um, so I don't really um, have any comment on this at all other than like, you know, it, it's not allowed, right? So just, I mean, they're in violation and, and it's not allowed. So, uh, you know, I, I sympathize, but it, it is the facts are the facts. So I don't really have anything to say about that other than I'd let the zoning board have that, have that issue to talk about. Okay. So Trevor? Yes? Trevor? Yes? I just, just, I just got confirmation that this may be something that's on the planning board's radar screen. Oh, great. Oh, that's great. Great to hear. Um, Love to work with them. Okay. Yeah, this, this is piece of property that was commercially zoned at one time mm -hmm. because uh, Faye Barbell's uh, Highway Electric was in there. Okay. Um, and then, I don't know exactly how it transpired, but that commercial zoning disappeared. So, um, because it was still commercially zoned, it will be in their rights to put the apartment there, but seeing that it's not, yeah. um, technically they can't. You know, the other thing is that the apartment was actually built, from my understanding, without any permits. Right. Yeah, no, there was no permits. So, um, yeah, you know, I mean, I think if it was, it, it, right, if it was, um, if it was allowed in town, may, you know, maybe the inspector would go back and make sure everything is up to code. But at this point, it's not allowed, so it's just, you know, well, I think no the inspector's doing the right thing and saying that it's right. not yeah. allowed. So yeah. by zoning it, you know, it is what it is. Okay. Um, you know yep. what? I just realized I skipped over formula based uh, business zoning bylaw that the planning board is reviewing right now. Um, Anna Lee, I see that Anna Lee and Deb Shriver are on. Um, do you want to just give us an update on this or um, or the time frame that you're reading? No. Okay. Thanks, Deb. Go ahead. <laughs> Yes, just very briefly, this is a bylaw that, um, I'm sorry, Jenny Shriver from Tuck Drive. Uh, I volunteer with Deerfield for Responsible Development. And we've uh, worked on this bylaw and presented it to the planning board. And it's essentially a tool for the planning board to work with. It'll give them some more discretion about working on, on having businesses arrive that are going to be able to um, uh, it better with the character, our, our agricultural and historical character, and um, and that that's important. We know that, that voters said in some years ago that they don't want Route 510 to look like Hadley, Route 9, and so on. And the, the character of the community is very important. So this is going to be um, talked about at a public hearing in the planning board on December 7th, so I think that's a good time to really have a, a good conversation about uh, what it what it is, what it involves. It's on the town website. Um, I, I can't give you chapter and verse, but it can be found in that. It's pretty sure it's on there. Yeah, Casey, can you make sure it's up on the uh, website? I've, um, yeah. I've been talking a bit with some proponents and um, I, I'm still hesitant on this. I, you know, I understand the reason behind it. Um, 
And I, I understand that the planning board does need more tools, I think, to tailor a bit of the appearance of businesses when they come to town. I'm a little concerned about the amount of restriction um, that, that requires, like, you know, you can't have more than three things, you know, can't wear all the same uniform. You can't have a, your logo on a on a coffee cup, and you can't uh, have a have a standardized sign if you have more than ten buildings as a business. And I think that it just seems a little restrictive to me. Um, I but I do you know I get both sides of this, so I, I'm just I'm struggling with it a little bit, trying to really understand it. And um, I, I'm really concerned about the unintended consequences of what we're what we're doing. I, I do get the fact that, you know, you want to keep a, a character and you want to, you're trying to create um, a business aesthetic going up five and ten. You only get, you know, so many shots out of it. It's not the most aesthetically pleasing piece of road right now. It's not like we're trying to do, well, I mean, if, if it was Old Main Street in Deerfield, Old Deerfield, you know, I get that, but it's not that right at the moment. So, um, and maybe we strive for that in the future. I, I, I get it. I, I understand why we're trying to do this, and I feel like the planning board doesn't have the tools to kind of negotiate those no. those talking points right now. But how we do that um, concerns me a bit. About I just think of you know. I always try just relate it to what I do for business and how, how it would affect a business such as mine or, or the one I'm in or you know, somebody else's. I, the town needs growth. I mean, we, we will shrivel up and die without business growth in town. What it looks like and, and the quality that it brings to our residents is important. Um, so I, I completely understand where it's coming from. I'm curious how the public hearing would go. I want to think a little further about my support or opposition to this or modification recommendations I would have for it. That's all. Um, Debbie, is it, this is for uh, December 7th, so uh, in anticipation of spring town meeting? That, that is our thinking currently, but you know, I, I think it's important that we work on, uh, have a bylaw that really works right. and that can be supported by town board. So that, that's part of the purpose of the public hearing, is really yeah. to do that. Yeah. And if there are changes so, in the bylaws so, that can be, so, uh, can be talked about and, and brought up. And I, I think it would be very helpful, Trevor, if you have thoughts about what what are some of the uh, unintended consequences likely to be. Yeah. It would be great if you can articulate those yes. and uh, so try to be thoughtful for others who may attend the hearing as well. Yes, sure. And, Raise kind of issues so we can make it a better bylaw or uh, modify it. Do, do whatever yeah. may need to be done. But the, the, the key is that we are we are vulnerable in some ways, and I know we have some um, promising uh, possibilities for business in the town. Um, that I wonder, you know, they haven't decided to go to Hadley, and um, and I think that part of the reason is that their business being placed here uh, is they have a synergy. It has a yes. synergy with our agricultural heritage, our historic community. It will help unite the corridor of Long 510 from Yankee Candle uh, on up uh, to Magic Wings and to yep. historic Deerfield, so on. So, you know, that's the kind of thing that will really bring business, bring people into the town. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the idea in, in the thinking here isn't is to say that a formula-based business can't be in town, but we'd like it to be configured in such a way to make some modification mm -hmm. um, uh, that will help fit better. And I know that uh, Judy Cundall in a previous meeting, this was with the planning board a couple of months ago, brought up the uh, issue of a, I think there's a Dunkin' Donuts in Haydenville. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and they made up some modifications on their um, the facade and their signage. It's a great looking building and it's yep. a Dunkin' Donuts and that's great. Yep. You know, and it's that, that that kind of thing that doesn't, you know immediately what it is, who it yes. is. It's, that's so important. It's an effort to, to, to clarify. 
So that's what we'll talk about on December 7th. Yeah, that's great. I so, agree with all so, that. Thank you. So, so this is Chris Harris regarding this uh, agenda. So this was just for comment on a draft zoning bylaw for the um, select board. I don't understand the process here. What, what are we doing right now? Oh, well, it was to bring it, Chris, what this does is bring it forward to the select board for review. It's, it's really just for, you know, we take it under advisement. Okay. So Technically, when you're doing a bylaw, Chris, it's supposed to go on a certain process under Chapter 48. Correct. Okay, so so the real key thing is the December 7th hearing that I'm hearing about, or right. it's a planning plan board meeting? Right. The planning board has generated the bylaw, so the by, you know they're holding the public hearing. And that'll be on the website, I'm sure. So yeah. that's, that's great. Yep. Cause, yeah, because obviously I, I have thoughts in this area. Great. In terms of business attraction to your company. Great. That'd be great to, to hear those. You know, the, um, Thank you. One of the concerns I have in looking at the bylaw and looking at some of the interpretations that may be taken from it, it's basically saying that you can't have any franchise businesses on, on, uh, in the zone. So that means under looking at 5 and 10 right now, that means we ne we would not have allowed Yankee Candle to build, and we would not have allowed Magic Wings to go in. Well, with this bylaw, uh, these are both franchises now. Oh, so if they oh, have they? more than a, like ten buildings, and, and I think so. In my conversation with a proponent today, they talked about um, that it would prohibit them from coming, but they would need to alter some of their appearance or trademark logo or a tire or a sign like they've got they, they've got to they can't have more than three i think of these ideas uh, or, or these identifying things that they invest in and I, that what concerns me is their brand mm -hmm. and companies invest in a lot in the brand and, and the dunkin donuts is a great point um you know i think everybody knows dunkin donuts now and because they are so large it is a franchise and like so as soon as you see this, the, the shape of the letters of their sign, even no matter the color, right, you kind of recognize that, or McDonald's. If there's a McDonald's in Stowe, Vermont, that looks beautiful, and you know, there's certain areas I've seen like that, and I, and, and I get that, so that, that makes sense, but if you're a, you know, a newer business that has maybe 10 stores, not four, 500, um, you're still trying to build your brand and all, so I, I just wonder, you know, the number of, units is that you know i just the, the thought about that how many why is the number 10 and not 500 or 100 or like i don't know so there's discussion that needs to happen yeah. when it comes to there because i we do want to be business friendly and welcoming yeah uh, but also kind of control the aesthetics yeah and we know that you know because we have no drive-throughs that we don't we're not going to have the dunkin donuts right uh standalones we're not going to have mcdonald's we're not going to have the other paths would change. Yeah. So. Um, yep. So. It is a fine balance for sure. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, I think it, it, the planning board does need some tools, right, to work with. But yeah, how how we come up with those is interesting. So. Okay. Um, next, Debbie, do you have anything else, or yeah. Emily? No, no. Thank you for that. Thank you for, okay. for uh, considering it, and sure. we appreciate that very much. See you on December 7th. Okay. Right. Anna Lee, you got a thumbs up. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Debbie, Debbie, oh, well. Great. All right. Great. Great. Yes, thank you. Okay, yes. Thank you for bringing it forward, Debbie and uh, Anna Lee. Um, town administrator's request for the MCPPO delegation and letter of support for stand for town administrator's certification. I think we signed that, didn't we, Casey? We can make a motion. Um, the delegation letter is actually something that I have to sign, but I wanted you to look at it because it, it's a formulaic thing, but you have to identify certain items. And for instance, um, I generally do the, you don't really have to do quote requests for anything under $10,000 yep. when you're purchasing supplies, but mm -hmm. we do do those reviews and we do price check things. and. Generally, if, for instance, buying the um, sign the the smart smart board, yep. that was a little bit over eleven thousand dollars, 
Um, we did it through a PO, but it was off the state contract. So things like that are right. things that we handle routinely in the office. And that's really what they want to know in the IG's office. They want to know who's handling that. Yeah. So that's yeah. the delegation form is. Okay. Um, the letter of support is actually, so Sam has a certification program, small town administrator. And I am preparing my application for it because my friend Andrea has been on my butt about it for quite a while. Um, and I would like to know if the board would do a letter of support and work with Jennifer to draft that up. Of course. Um, it's not something that has to happen right away, yeah. but if I need it if I want to get that certification. We would love to help you I with that. I thought I'd ask. Yep, yeah. we'd love to help you with that. That's fine, Casey. Sure. Okay. Right. Then I will put Jennifer in touch with Carolyn or with you, Trevor, whoever wants yep. to help sure. draft that. Because I didn't even know what to say. I was going to tell Jennifer to talk to Andrea. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I can't. I'm very. It's very difficult for me to toot my own horn. So. <laughs> well, we can do that. We're we know how to do that. Okay. We're good. Um, All right. So that's that. Okay. Okay. Um, the MVP uh, project update. You had a meeting with. Wait. Kevin. Give me a sec. No. Okay. So Kevin and Chris Curtis and I met earlier today and had a conversation about some of the MVP projects. Kevin, are you still there? Yes, he is. Yep. He is. Um, I was going to ask him if he could just chime. <laughs> Can you chime in about Kelleher, please? Sure. Um, Kelleher, um, they started the, the hard construction project. Um, they, they ran into a little bit of a pitch and giddy up yesterday. Um, they should have solved that as far as the watering. Um, because I've been in classes every day this week, I have not been able to. I, I meet him there first thing in the morning, but you know, I, literally, I I'm, I'm still going from this morning, so I have not had an opportunity to go see where they're at at this point. But they were making it sound like they were going to be able to go ahead and continue digging today. Prepared Friday, they should be getting the information, or excuse me, they should be getting the uh, the culvert should be showing up on Friday. On um, anticipated end date is the 30th of this month, and I don't see any issues with that not happening. Okay. All right. And I was just asking if Chris Curtis was going to jump on the meeting, but it doesn't, he might not have gotten my text. Okay. Uh, so the other thing that we talked about today was the tree boxes in the town center, because as you know, we discovered an issue with the plan where the boundaries are not clearly defined. So in order to facilitate it, I got in touch with Harold Eaton Associates and I've asked them to help us figure that out because obviously the town can't work in private property. We can only work in the public way. So I'm, I have not heard back from Randy either on where he is right this second. He and I have talked the last two days but because there were several meetings today, he and I haven't touched base, so I will keep okay. the board up to date on the boundary issue. All right. um, we also received some complaints from several business owners, and so it really prompted Chris and Kevin and I to circle back around. Um, the, the basic, one of the basic issues is if if we have issues with the boundaries, it slows down when we can start uh, doing the digging. And we are sitting, the contractor is sitting on a piece of equipment that's very expensive. Um, combined, the boundaries combined with some of the public information issues that the business owners have identified, and some of the stuff I didn't even know um, until we dug into it last week. Um, I think it makes sense to consider demobilizing and holding off on doing some of this digging and making sure that we put put the trees in an area that we can maintain them because I think there's more than one thing that needs to be addressed before we can move forward and Chris and Kevin agreed with me on that. Kevin, did you want to add anything? Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's, you know, I, I did send out a quick email last night um, my opinion is to, to demobilize. A um, couple of things is, like Casey said, you know, we've got a problem with delineation of, of where uh, the property lines are. 
Um, they went ahead and did alternate sites um, over that need special permits for MAC DOT because it was not recognized that um, that property actually belonged to the state and not the town of Deerfield. Uh, there are a couple that could continue to go in as is, um, but to be honest with you, uh, speaking with Armando and, and just seeing how the whole thing is playing out, looking at the time timeline, um, if we put the brakes on right now, we've got an opportunity. Um, demobilize will cost us about $800. Um, we still own for some things that he has done um, outside of his contract. Obviously, we'd have to sit down with him to say, okay, this is what you've done so far. This is part of your contract, and this is what still needs to be done in the springtime. Once we get our act together to make sure everybody is, is in line, I the dotter, the T's across. Because um, realistically, our, his contract, because of the way it stands, it is the, the trees were supposed to be planted already. Um, he was supposed to be taking that equipment out of town this week. Now, arbitrarily, if we decide we're going to wait a week or two, then we're outside of our contract, and we will end up paying whatever that rental cost is, that piece of machinery, which I'm assuming is going to be probably at least $2,500 to $3,000 a week yeah. um, because of the size of the equipment. I, I have um, no, so it, Kevin, I have no problem waiting until spring, yeah. but I feel like we need to reach back to that engineering firm. Oh, yeah. They did a poor job. Yep. They didn't even, you know, like dig okay, safe. Okay, Casey, Casey took care of that with a letter. Yes, she did. Okay. Case, yep. And it will be... I read that. It wasn't that bad. It was, it was well put. It was very to the point. Well, it was very yeah, good. It was well put. Yeah. No, I agree. Let's let's just. So we are through. trying to address that. Let's and one of the things that we can do, and Chris has actually started looking back in the overall MDT budget, and that was the other issue. Is if we see what happens with Kelleher Drive, we didn't have a contingency in the tree box culture project, but there is a contingency in the Kelleher Drive project. Yeah. So Chris is looking at that, and I think he's going to talk to Andrew Smith, our MDT uh, liaison down in. Northampton and see if we have a little bit of wiggle room, we might be able to use the MVP budget to absorb some of it. But in the meantime, we have to get this done. And Kevin and I identified where we can find money right now. Chris is going to talk to Andrew because if we do want to pivot like that, Andrew has to approve it. Um, and so I think it makes sense to do the demobilization and circle the wagons and Mm -hmm. figure out how we can fix some of the problems that have come up in the last week or so. Yes, and discuss whether, you know, some, yeah, we should just regroup on that a little bit. Yeah, as long so, as Okay, we, so if you want to do that, I'd like to send a letter out or an yep. email out to Brian Migliola, who represented the business owner yes. to contact the town. I think it's important to do that, and, and yes, yeah, I'm all for that. Go ahead. That's fine. Yep. That's fine. And I think that what that will prompt is a bigger discussion with them. So Good. it may be worthwhile be great. to do a separate meeting just to discuss this. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. Because I'd like to see, um, I mean, I've, I've been after well, they were a, a group. They, they yeah, were I know, I know. I've, I've invited many game. different things. But I would maybe this will call less a, a group of like-minded people to come together and look at the yeah. The investments we want to make in the community and make sure it benefits those those well, people who, who bring business to the town and um, yeah. yeah. So I think I think that makes sense. Okay, so we're going to work on that with Chris. Okay. And I think Kevin will probably help me just out of the goodness of his heart <laughs> uh, right before he I'm decides to kill me. Sure, he will. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Right. So, so my question is, is, can I safely go ahead and get in touch with Armando Noon's Noon's construction? Let him know that we can demobilize it for now. Yeah. We can go ahead. And we can we can dig because the trees. We already own the trees. Yeah. Um, they've already been so. So I've already spoken with him, and we've got a plan where we can go ahead and we can dig into the uh, the Leary lot that's yeah. right there. We can we can mulch the hell out of it. Right. The last um, season. We, but because we are outside, just I want to make sure everybody's well aware that because we are we are already outside of our contract as far as the trees going into the ground. Yeah. With that being said, he is not going to guarantee the trees. I, I get that. I, I yeah, think they'll be fine. No, I mean, it's good. No, it's good property. No, obviously, we will do the best we can to yeah. make sure that 
that you know we will we will we'll do whatever we can to make sure they survive through the winter. Yeah. You know, which which shouldn't be an issue. Yep. But I just want to make sure that it's known now. It, you it know, is. if 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 three of the four trees die and then come springtime, some of these guys start trying to go back on noons. No. Uh, that's not for the No, that's not. Part. That wouldn't be no, right. That wouldn't be right. The They're anything. working with us. We're working with them. Yeah, yeah that's no, fine. It's yeah. 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 We'll try to make it all right in yeah. a manner that doesn't, isn't a detriment to the town or to news or, you know, any of the stakeholders in this. Yeah. And so, you know, I think that opens us up to a certain amount of conversation that yep. can be helpful. Okay. Sounds good. I, I would like to just put out so people are aware that with, with Armando News, um, I've never worked with this guy before, but uh, every time that, that he was being thrown a curveball, uh, he was right there trying to figure out what we can do to make it right and yep. not cost a ton of money. That's um, great. He's been amazing. That's great. He really has. It's really great. He's, he's a see. great contractor to work with, and, and I would welcome him into the town anytime uh, working off of uh, our money. For the simple fact that he's he's fully aware of everything. You know? That's he, right. He and I he and I come to a couple couple areas where where we the highway department we will go ahead and we'll take care of the paving for those two other areas that, that were outside of the scope. Yeah. So then that will that will save us probably fifteen to two grand because now he won't have to mobilize somebody to come up in. So right. I wanted I had conversations with him to make sure that it wasn't going to be a problem with the contract. Yep. And again, he's like, hey, if you can do it, you can save yourself a couple grand, dude. Right. I, I'm all over that. That's I'm like, great. great, thank you. Great. So, okay, that's okay. good to hear. So, that, so that's basically where we're at. Good all to right. find a good partner. So yeah, we. it's been something of a troubleshooting challenge, but I think we're in a decent place now that you agree with us that we should demobilize and, and circle our wagons and yeah. approach oh, it a little bit differently. No, way. absolutely. Yep. I'm still, okay. like I'm still upset with the yeah. engineering firm, but there's nothing we can do about yep. that. Well, okay. we're working on it. If there is a fix, it, the email that they returned to me was certainly not, um, they basically said they would get back in touch with us by okay. Friday. Great. So that's a reasonable response. Absolutely. It wasn't, yep. You know, they weren't angry. I wasn't necessarily angry either. I was just forthright. Yes, they um, back. And so they, hear, they heard it. They're going to get back in touch with us, and we're going to do what we can to work with everybody so we can get this done. Great. Um, and like I said, we, we're trying to figure out other avenues we can use to pay for this. Yep. Um, but we do need to demobilize now so that we can be in a better place in the spring. Okay. okay. All right. It'll save us money in the spring. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. It'll save us money. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Thanks, Jeff. All right, cool. Thank you. Right, that's it. I just got the last one that I'm on, so I'm out of here. All right. All right. Good night. All right. Good night. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. So we have a couple of anticipated items. Um, you did the one already, right? Yeah, but there, we and need one. to um, uh, have Alex be oh. um, vote Alex the board of registrars. And vote. then before we close, we need to set the sewer rate as well. Yeah, we have to go back to oh. the sewer rate. So, uh, so I, I'm really excited that um, that Alex and uh, I'm gonna get his name wrong, but it's. Hirsch and Redder. Hirsch and Redder. Hirsch and Alex, uh, he's been All right, uh, now we're just all doing it. <laughs> he's been great. Um, Missing up the name. Uh, really happy to um, to hear that he would serve on our registry uh, our board, Register. board, board of boards of registers. Um, so, uh, and, and that was, I, th I think, a request from Barb, right? To, yeah. to have somebody yeah. there? Yeah. So. It was a request today from Barb. Yep. Um, she lost a, a member of the Board of Registrars, and there are some changes in the law based on the changes we made to some of the election requirements in the last several months. Okay. That she needs to have a full complement of members of the Board of Registrars. Okay. And so it's actually, she's coming up on a deadline. Okay. So this was why I added it as an item unanticipated. So I make a motion to appoint Alex Hershen uh, Rader. Rader to uh, to the um, the board of registrars. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfer. I, Carolyn Nuss. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, Alex. Alex. Um, Welcome. Oh, it's on. Hey, thank yeah. you. He, he's recording the meeting for us. Oh, right. <laughs> yes, he is. He's moderating the meeting tonight. Great. So, well, thank Casey, you for your service. 
Casey, you're going to sign um, me up and anybody else for the November 19th um, MMA conference. Okay? Yep. Um. And then you're going to sign us up for the January conference. Correct? Yeah. The annual MMA conference. Yep. yep. Right. In January. Um, it's all, yep. it's all uh, virtual. So there's um, we, we will actually have a huge savings um, because everybody, it's over, going to be over four days, I believe. And, and the Selectman's Association meeting is a separate, is a whole separate deal. Yep. I think that's January 8th or something like that. Um, so, so the last item is the... Right. So do you want me to make a motion on that? So yeah. we, I mean, normally um, Barb puts out something and we kind of, because we're working... Um, with the engineers right now, um, it's a little bit different format. But um, I would make a motion to set the FY uh, twenty-two wastewater. Uh, twenty-one. It's actually twenty-one. This is our FY twenty-one. That's what I kept asking. Yeah. That's, this that's, is where the FY twenty-one, not FY twenty-two. Oh, that's what I thought. That we have to set. It's the 1234, okay, and then another, yes, thank you, okay. That's what, I, I was wondering why it was jumping that's up far forehead. That's why I was mumbling, because I couldn't figure out what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we were going to do one, but I wanted to have a discussion so, with all of us so, first after we heard from them. That's so, because we were talking crap. Yeah, we're talking. <laughs> so, so, so 12, okay, so you're making a motion. So I'm making a motion to set the, the FY21 um, uh, uh, wastewater budget and sewer rate for, um, for 1234 per thousand gallons, um, yeah. we would do a fixed connection fee of $100, which is unchanged. Mm -hmm. And I'll leave the rest alone. Okay. So, yep. um, and then, uh, okay, that's what I want to make sure I can email to Barb tomorrow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, Did you uh, second that, Dave? I'll second that. All right. Is there any further discussion? I'm still a little confused on that. That's why I was concerned. Can you hang on a minute? Let me just bear with me a second. Okay, so while he's doing that, yourself. can I give you a couple of updates? Because one of them requires uh, a select board vote that I found out about today at 2.30. Okay. Um, okay, so there's a couple of things that I've been working on in the midst of a lot of other stuff. Um, the Oxford property sale. So I had a conversation with Andrea Woods up at the COG because she did the last one. And we sort of brainstormed something, but I think we're going to need an appraisal because the we don't know what the property is worth. In, and I can't, I'm having technical difficulties, so you can't see me making air quotes. In COVID property sales, it may be different, so I have to warn you guys. So I'm going to get in touch with an appraiser and we're going to need an appraisal. I just want to be able to sell the damn thing. This is ridiculous. I know. The problem is, and the reason I talked to, uh, to Andrea about it was because I knew she had just done a sale for another town. So Keith did a sale um, of their school that they closed. And it was significantly lower. And one of the things, or the, the quote, the responses were significantly lower. Because property may not be as valuable in, during COVID. So I just want everybody to understand that. That's why I wanted to tell you. So I'm going to get, well, to get an appraisal, and then I'm developing that RFP. OK? okay. Um, the other thing is, is green community. So we had our kickoff meeting for our green community project because we received the grant. And I, we're, there's a couple of things going on. But the green community's annual report needs approval authorization for me to sign it by the select board. So that's in, it's due actually on Friday, and um, we've been getting help, as you know, through the COG. Alyssa LaRose and Allison have been helping us. So they've developed it, MA and I are both looking at it, and one, two things that we needed to tell you about the new grant is we are going to get in touch, so I have things to do. We're going to get in touch with Eversource to find confirmation on the incentive because we have to report that back to EOEA. 
and then we'll get in touch with Eversource, which is a different person, um, to begin the purchasing process of those street lights and make sure that our quote is still good. As you may remember, Ken Garber used to work with us on that, but he retired. So the one thing that really was a piece of information that I wanted the board to know, which is why I jumped in and wanted to give you this update, is Heather Butler is the town administrator in Buckland. And Buckland just went through this project, the streetlight project. And she ended up being thrown into it coming from a, she was hired, the interim had been handling it before she was hired. And so there wasn't a lot of public outreach. And one of the biggest uh, takeaways from her experience from what Alyssa said today was really starting the planning process for public outreach. Because when you change the streetlights, as you may remember, people are very um, critical of what they think should happen versus what might be you know, a good option in terms of energy conservation. So I talked to MA, and she's going to take a request to start a timeline for public information outreach um, to the Energy Resources Committee, and she's going to get, they're going to get back to us with sort of an idea of how we can do this um, and how we can share information with the public. So I just want you to be aware that we're going to try to um, take a lesson out of Heather Butler's book. And I'm also going to talk to Heather directly and see if there's some other sage advice you can give me. Okay. Um, All right. While we're still waiting for Trevor, there was a couple things in our mail. Um, there's a survey from Valley Neighbors. It's um, for um, elders um, that are interested in help. Uh, I guess there's a small grant available. Um, so, um, Casey, do you know where the, where the survey is available? Is it on our website or the senior center? The case. The senior center, I think. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm actually still here. So I yes, Christina is still here. sewer rate public hearing to set that rate and I think I think what we want to do is set that for the next meeting if possible I'm not sure if the ninth works or if you need to do the next date after that but there needs to be a going back to my records there needs to be a public hearing on that and then we set the rate on the increase after that public hearing and then um, so usually Barb gives vote? us that. We can't vote for 12.34 no. tonight? No, no, I don't think so. I think it needs to, I, I think we, we kind of talk about where we want um, that to be. I think we re relay that, but, but we have to have a public hearing about it. Okay. I'm almost positive, because that's what we had yeah, last that year. That seems so like we have to do, yeah, we do we that every that, year, yeah. right? And then, yeah. and usually Barb gives us, you know, kind of how much that, that generates Generate, and what the yeah. total is and all that stuff, so. Um, okay. So I can check in with Casey and Barb, you know, this week and yeah, get we'll that just figured out. Yeah, we'll just see what that, uh, because we'll I mean, have based to on the information we right, got. Right, the 1234 was... If yeah. we need to hold a hearing, we at least need to give it seven days. Okay. So we probably should schedule it for the 18th. That's and fine. And that may put her back somewhat. I don't think it will, when I spoke with her. I think we're good, though. That, that makes sense, because I think okay. she was just getting the readings right. anyways, or not even, so... Okay. Um, All right, so okay. we'll have to put the hearing paperwork together and I'll do it for the 18th. Right? Okay, that's perfect. Okay. Yep, that'd be great. Okay, Mo moving on, um, we got a letter. So, so before we move on, Carol, oh, sure. yeah. 
Paris. Going back to that agenda item, Oxford property sale need for appraisal. Was there appraisal done before you were trying to sell it? And why are we so late in the game getting COVID-19 adjusted appraisals? We're not late in the game, Chris. We ha if you recall, we made a change to the road. That has to be referenced in the RFP. We're not late in the game. We're actually doing fairly well in terms of selling the property because when you make a change to the property, you have to reference it in the request for proposals, which is what an RFP is. And you have to identify all of the um, factors related to the property. Um, an appraisal, it's been a couple of years since they did so an I, appraisal. I guess, I guess, okay, I guess what you're saying is that even though we've been talking about this for months, because of the surveying and everything else, RFP never got issued. No, we haven't issued an RFP. And so that was part of the issue is nailing down, you know, in order to do the RFP, there's certain steps you have to take. And so the town made some changes in the property itself. We did an ANR for a certain section of it and we made a change to the road and that has to be identified because when you produce the plan for somebody to make an offer on that property which is what the rfp is asking for they have to see all the itemized information in order to be able to do that but for the town to create a bottom line number we need to know what its value is right now and so that um, was my issue okay. with uh, that's the issue is I, I thought there might be a lower value issue because of COVID because business is, is depressed. The economy is depressed. And so I clarified that with one of my colleagues, Andrea Woods. She's the chief procurement officer up at the COG and she had just done the Heath property. So that's why I called her. And I just, I want everybody to be aware that it may not come back at the, the amount that we want. And it isn't our, it isn't necessarily the town's fault. It's the situation we're in with COVID that might have an impact. Okay, I understand that, but I would just caution the town not to devalue the property. Um, but I also understand what Carolyn was saying that, you know, to turn the property into cash sooner rather than later and get some economic activity going is better mm -hmm. yes. for everyone. It's been so right. frustrating. It's been a year in September. So we're past a year. Yep. It's been 14 exactly. months. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, drives me nuts. Okay. And everybody knows I need to be the bearer of bad news, but I have to give people the, the landscape of what this looks like. I know. It wouldn't know. be fair for me not to tell people. Mm -hmm. I know, Casey. It's fine. It's just driving me nuts. Okay. All right. So we have a couple mail items. Um, we got an uh, incredibly detailed letter from uh, Darren Gray on the septic system. For Dollar no, General, but that'll be helpful when we have to yes, look at that. We we need uh, so I'd like to just put it in the record and yeah, um, and we'll reference it. We'll you, reference it, but can I get a copy of that? Yeah, just make well, a copy. Yeah. Dave, do you want one or you have one in our record? It's not perfect. No, yeah. not until we yeah, because they haven't yeah. really come up with a plan yet. Well, it's also expired now. It right. Expires this week, so they have to have a new one. New one. Um, there's no valid plan. Also, that plan was for the original uh, site plan, which, you know, they changed the driveway and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So, um, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's over two years old now. So, um, they'll have to get another one. But it, it was an incredibly detailed letter. So, I just want to make sure it was in the room. For clarification, Carolyn, that. Um understand that even if the board of health reviews it you still have to have richard go through those numbers because that's what he's his training is oh, and he has to do all those elevations and all that information I know. plus you wouldn't see a plan until there's a building permit and until there's some sort of action by various boards we won't see that oh i know but the, what i'm just saying is the plan's expired but it, this is a good reference so anyway it's in the record um uh, we have a DEP contract for the recycling contract. Casey, we just need to vote to um, the RDP. Vote to approve and have you sign it. Yep. Okay. So um, uh, we also received a question from my uh, our insurance company yeah, about okay. whether we want to continue with them through 2023. Yeah, I got. I normally I would handle these, but I did want the board to comment on this because 
Um, I think we should. It's not really a good time to go out for bids or insurance because I think there's so many unknowns and Maya has cons consistently given us the opportunity to utilize their credit program so that we can get some discounts on our insurance and their actual, and that's usually through attending trainings and such. Um, and that's actually worked out well for the town over the past several years since we started working with Maya, which was back in 2014, right, Carolyn? Yes, well, um, we went out to bid um, in, tw in 2018. So, um, I, you know, and, and Maya was much better. And um, Trevor and I, in the last three... Oh, we get good discounts. We yeah, we, we max out our, we go to all the seminars, and so we've maxed out our discount. I think we're like 10 or 12% off um, by the seminars. Kevin has been getting credits with his ocean yeah. training. Oh, yeah, he has been meetings today so, all day. Um, right. I, I think we just, this is not a good time. We don't have budgets and everything, so we're just, it's not a good time to go out to bid. Um, you don't that was have kind of what I thought. Yeah, well, no, you, don't have time, you don't have time to do the new list. Right, and the bid really process good. is pretty substantial. Yes, yes, yes it no, is. No, I think they've been great. Yeah, so I mean, far. I... I mean, they're not increasing this year. No, no, <laughs> so... Um, it's only three. Okay, so we got, I'll make a motion to um, maintain the Maya insurance program for property, liability, and workers' compensation. Trevor McDaniel, second. Um, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, David Wolfer. Aye, Carolyn Nass. Okay, then the other one is the recycling dividend program, um, the RDP contract. We just um, received the, the it's, money back. Yeah, it's, it's actually just to receive like $5,600 is our yep. estimate. Great. So, uh, make, make a motion, motion to re re receive the grant money. I'll second the recycling program. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. I did welcome. I call him that. Okay. All right. We're all set then. Casey, is there anything else that we missed? No. Nope. You told me I need to sign up for the. No I need to sign you guys up for the November nineteenth conference and oh. the annual MMA conference. And I will. I will start thinking about scheduling a date for uh, DPC to come back in January. Okay. Okay. And I also. Um, I also want to um, remind everybody that November eighteenth, right? Is the eighteenth? Is the. Um, kind of public hearing on um, our first discussion of the park that um, the town uh, public information public, session. public information session on on the park that we uh, that the town approved at the uh, special town meeting recently and um, so we'll be talking about what we'll put there and what it'll look like and we have ideas but all that will get hashed out just so. uh, yeah great that's on our website. That'll be on, yeah, I'll be on a Zoom like everybody could sign in like tonight. Please, Check it out. Please participate. Yeah, yeah, we want to hear what, what you um, think. Okay. And just as a that. friendly reminder, you know, we're not a town of 200 people, so we are not notifying every citizen in person that we're having meetings and stuff. That's the purpose of our town website. So people can look at all the different meetings that we have, all the different hearings we have. And I quite frankly don't like hearing complaints about, well, nobody told me about this, even though we've been meeting out about it for two years or something. I know, two years. Um, you know, it's part of the citizen's responsibility to be looking at that stuff too. You know, um, so. And we, and, we, and we really try to notify people too. I mean, we, we send to, out. But this, we send out the yeah. It, it is difficult. So I understand. Thank you, David. That was nice to meet you. Sir. Um, okay. If there's nothing else, I'll take a motion to All order. the comments. Oh, oh yes. please. Yes. 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 We have executive sessions scheduled and we will have to go back through the reopening plan. 
So it's scheduled for six o'clock, and I just updated the agenda to include that Tilton Library reopening plan. Chris. So, so is, is there really an open session on that one? The, there will be, well, they have to start an open session, and I rearranged the agenda so that the reopening plan is first, and okay. then the executive session. Okay, great. But we do have a time limit with council, guys. Yes. Okay. So we'll be, yep. Rocky. Yes, uh, a couple of quick things. I missed the very beginning of the meeting tonight, so I don't know whether you said this or not. Uh, I just uh, think that the... Uh, the staff over the past two weeks and yesterday for Bolton, they did an absolutely fantastic job. Thank you. Um, oh, everything thank went you. smoothly. Um, I, I, again, just kudos to them. And the other thing is uh, lower gold being paid now, it's wonderful. <laughs> <He does great. laughs> I'm going to tell Kevin yeah. you said that. Yeah. Everybody yeah. tells him those things. So. <laughs> no. And I will tell Barbara that you said that too. Yeah. Because they did. Yeah. I thank yeah. them today too. Yeah, right. they did. They, they really did. And uh, I voted early two, two weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, I go by yesterday, and everything looked like it was running so smooth. It was. So they did a fantastic job. They yes. did a great job. And all the Thanks volunteers. For yeah. I that. Thank you, Rocky. All the volunteers uh, when I came through. It. Yeah, when I came through, were were yes. you know were great. You know, everybody helped out, and um, I know Barb had a lot of new people and a change and. And it, that was a big election. They did a lot of work ahead oh, of time, uh, get, getting those ballots, getting them out, pre-registering, and, and then I, people, I think, did a great job using the drop box. We finally got one big enough for the selection. Uh, but yeah, so I think you're right, Rocky. Everybody did a great job, and you should be all proud. We had, I think, 86% of the town turnout, which is very impressive. Um, so thank you, everybody, for participating in, in, our, in our election and having your say. Yeah. Um, However, it works out. Good night. Good night, okay. everybody. Motion Listen, to adjourn. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfman. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Good night.